that's good. And I see the chat, so that's good. Right. I think I think I'm set up. Hey Wayne. Are you the uh, same Wayne I think you are? I would presume you are. How weird is this? How weird is what? Oh, right, right. Yeah, well, I picked up on it. I was um, psychically listening in and I thought, right, I better let Wayne know I'm good. And here I am. Alive. <laughs> Yeah, been out of the saddle for a while, so I thought um, I thought it was time to do some streaming. Better start curving those dodgy thoughts from now on. Oh, mate. <laughs> yeah, so I'm kind of going back to roots here. Let me change the camera angle. Let's go with that view. So, yeah, what I got here is kind of my classic thing. It's what I used to do early on, Game Gears. And this one's getting a new screen, because this one, it's a good Game Gear, but this screen isn't so good. So yeah, I'm gonna get this done. Um, it's a fairly easy install, if I remember right. It's been a while, though. But yeah, alive and kicking. I'm sure turning the soldering iron on is going to bankrupt me because of the electricity, but whatever, you know. <laughs> as soon as I turn that soldering iron on, I'm just going to cry, you know. What do you do? Hello, 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 Luke. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, but yeah, anyway, so what's on the agenda today is this game gear. And I'm going to be installing a funny playing LCD. Funny playing is just like a generic um, Chinese knockoff of the McWills. They're okay though. They're actually pretty decent. So we've got the LCD module here. You know, it's a pretty cheap standard. I think it's. I think it might be a TFT. I don't know. Anyway, it's a cheap LCD either way. Um, we've got the custom board here, which is. Pretty standard. People want to see the PS4 above all. Probably the PS3 and PS4. I'd say PS3. But um, PS3s are an absolute pain in the arse. I'd rather work on a PS4. But yeah, anyway, so this, um, this LCD thing also comes with this board, which is what drives it. It's got this nice little Xilinx uh, FPGA on board, which is pretty cool. And what that does is basically convert the old signals that this LCD uses into a format that the new LCD can understand. So this is like an intermediary chip. Slim Frankie, hopefully not. Hopefully not, though. Uh, I don't think you could Frankie a Slim. You could Frankie a Fat. I don't know. In my experience with PS3 stuff, like I've not had much luck with them. They're a huge time sink. And... Um, from what I've heard from others who have got them working is they tend to have problems and fall apart later on down the line, which is kind of, it's, it's just probably not worth the time investment, to be honest. But yeah, in fact, that's part of the reason I stopped streaming for ages. I just got sick of working to the PS3s I've got to the point where it was like burnout. So I was just like, nah, I'm going to take a break. And I took a break. So yeah, anyway, that's the basics. You also get a couple of... Um, Resistors with this. Or are they caps? They look like caps. And a single resistor. Um, that's for a different model of Game Gear, I think. This one's already been recapped. I've already recapped this one. Uh, I'm not sure how well this will show up. Or if it'll even focus. Let's find out. Yep. You can see here, it's been recapped. I like to keep the job neat as well. I don't leave like legs like all over the place like some people do. I keep it nice and, you know, nice and short and as nice a form factor as I can get it. Hey, RB King, welcome. Um, 
Oh, Frankie and as such, but Slim's like 40 nanometer off the shelf, no mods required except voltage. PS4 only needs an encoder and a fan. Uh, sure. Hey, Andre. Andre? Yeah, I assume I'm saying that right, Andre. Welcome. So, yeah, if you do have a Game Gear anyway, with a dodgy screen or you just want to update it, um, these AliExpress screens are pretty good. You can also get alternate screens from places like Retro 6, but um, I find the amount of money they want for those, they sell it all in little bits as well, which is ridiculous. You don't get a kit. You, you can buy the screen, you can buy the board and all the rest of it, and it adds up to about twice as much as one of these for about the same result, so what's the point, right? Anyway, with this mod, what we got to do, if I uh, move that camera a bit, we've got to remove a bunch of components. Um, I think with this, I've got to remove a resistor here, transistor, two resistors here, I think there's a couple of transistors down here that might have to go a couple of caps as well if I remember. I think R41's got to go which is there. I think R44's got to go. Um, obviously this screen's got to go as well. So let's get cracking. So first of all let's just um, unscrew this original screen's um, backlight which is a good old compact fluorescent. Can't say I'm a fan of these compact fluorescents. They're not the best backlights. I had a customer once who just didn't want a new screen, but they just wanted a new backlight. A little LED powered backlight for it instead of this huge compact fluorescent. Better to get a backlit screen in my opinion, but you will get much better battery life with the LED mods, so hey, why not, right? Now, if I can just get this screw out, kind of, kind of gripping on there. There we go. So that's a bit loose, but you can't take this off just yet. Well, yeah, yeah, there there, there is that, Luke. There, there is that. They don't flash. Um, but yeah, what I'm going to do is you flip it over. And uh, there's a couple of points for these, this compact fluorescent tube. You've got a solder point right here and another one here. So I'm going to desolder those and that will just drop right out. And then I'm going to desolder these fuses because we won't need these fuses anymore. These fuses are just for the compact fluorescent because it's quite a high voltage circuit. So we'll get that off. And uh, yeah. I think we'll start with removing the screen because it's going to make everything just a little bit easier. So if I take this off first, we'll then take the rest apart. So, if I get the hot air on, this is by far the easiest way to take these off. Stick it at about 70% airflow. I'm going to put mine at about... I'll put it at about 420C. And uh, if it takes me 69 minutes to do the whole job, then you know, hey, full 2069. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just being stupid. So, let's fire it up. it comes just like that if we flip it over we've got this um, adhesive that was holding it too so I'll probably take that off as well just to be neat I should just pull right off to be fair 
Yep. And then to get the remaining bit off, we can just whack a bit of IPA on there and it'll dissolve it nicely. So just stick a bit of IPA on. It's a classic, isn't it? Oh, hot air stations are great, Tom. They're absolutely great. You know, there's, there's budget ones as well. You don't have to start out with a super good one. The one I've got is a um, Atten ST862D. I think it's in my uh, description, actually. You probably see it on there, I think. I think I linked it on AliExpress, although my links might be quite old now, so I don't know if they work. But it's the same one that, um, if you watch other console repair folk, you might have seen um, Phil Dakota using one as well. I think he has the same model. And I think Lewis Rossman recommends them too. But it's a good one. But you can get cheaper. You can get quite a bit cheaper. Depends on your budget. But it is worth having one in your toolkit because it makes things so much easier. Well, there we go. So we got that off. Now, I don't want to sit with IPA and gunk all over everything. So I'm prepared. I'm going to wipe it up with a bit of kitchen towel. Keep my work area nice and clean. Messaged on my phone apparently. He's messaging me. Oh. RB King. Right, anyway, so that's the old LCD off. Next thing we'll do then is we'll take this compact fluorescent tube backing out and that'll just drop right out. So I'm going to use another very handy dandy tool, this, for that job. So I'll power it on and we'll just let that get up to temperature. What have I got this set to? 450C, that's a bit high. Let's turn it down to about 400 should do the job. I'll just let that get hot and while we wait for that to heat up I'll get some I'll get some good old fashioned flux on these joints because you know they're 20 odd year old solder joints. Got to get a hacko recaps would be so much easier. You can get away with um, a KSGER. Let me show you. I bust these out quite a lot when I stream, but. Just get yourself one of these. That's a bit out of focus, that, isn't it? But um, yeah, there you go. KSGER, KSGER, I don't know how you say it, T12 soldering station. This works with the same tips that the hackos use as well, so you won't have a problem. That's what I recommend, um, especially if you're on a budget, because, you know, a hacko FX station's like 400 pounds, it's like hundreds of dollars, right? They will last forever, but... And there are cheaper things that will fit your budget. And I used to use one of those, so I can say they are pretty good. They'll do most jobs that you'll throw at them. Right, is this up to temperature yet? No. Nope. Still waiting on it. Hopefully that'll work. I've just put a new filter in it. I make my own filters for the desoldering gun. I have this tool. And I have um, these sheets, so I just make my own filters. It's a lot cheaper, but uh, I'm trying something a bit new. This is quite a thin sheet, and I'm trying this much thicker sheet. I've had it forever, but I've not tried it, so I put a new filter in today that I've made. So no idea if that's going to be any good or not, so I might have to change it out. We'll see. Is this up to temperature? Yes, we're up to temperature. So, we should be able to take these uh, compact fluorescent solder joint solder up now. So, let's give it a go. <coughs> to be fair, that just fell right out. And then we'll do this one. <coughs> Might as well clear the hole. Yeah, that's just dropped right out. Look. 
There we go. And that's out. So I'll just put that out of the way. And then we've got these two fuses. They can go, there's no need for them to be here anymore. So let's get rid of these. Same sort of thing. Just get the desolder gun on and whack them off. So, I don't think we need that for anything else. And these should just pop right off now. Yep, that's one out. And that's the other out. So there we go. That's the fuses gone. So now with no fuses on the game gear, uh, we've taken the LCD off. And then there's a few things we've got to remove. So we've got to remove a couple of transistors here, Q3, Q4. So I'm going to get those off with hot air. You see, the nice thing is, once you get this board stripped down just a little bit like I've done, you don't really have to worry about damaging too much on the board. You do need to be a little careful when using hot air, though. You want to be quite quick when you do it. Oh, funny playing have been making uh, LCDs for quite some time, or at least, at least that's how the AliExpress listings put it. They might not actually be funny playing. They, they might, it might be like just playing on that brand name, right? Why is this not coming off? What's going on with this? This should be plenty hot enough by now. What's going on here? Is it glued down? Oh, I bet there's... Okay, let's come off that. <laughs> yeah, let's come off that. I think there's glue holding this. Yeah, that solder's... That solder's wet. There's a bit of glue on it. Yeah, they, they might not be genuine funny playing. Although I did get the high voltage cap off I was going to remove, so that's good. We do need to remove that and that as well. So let's get these off. I'll come back to these. I might be able to just get them off with a soldering iron and a big blob of solder. Yeah, Fade to Noir, they are definitely McWill clones. I mean, here you go, I'll show you. Right, that's the board. And, uh,. It looks very familiar, doesn't it? Doesn't that look like a McWill? <laughs> well, there's the PCB. It's it's pretty much a McWill. I'm pretty sure they've just cloned these chips. I don't know how they managed to do that. I would have thought that the uh, original McWill creator would have um, locked down the uh, chips. But I guess if he has them manufactured in China, well, there you go. That's 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 why. Anyway. Anyway, let's let's get these other bits off. And we'll get a bit more a bit more flux on. So we want to get that high voltage cap, that coil. We can take this transformer off as well. We've already accidentally removed the other high voltage cap we were going to take, so that's fine. So we get that off, that off, that off, and uh, these solder joints here too. I 
at maximum zoom. I'm at maximum zoom. You're waiting on a shipment of these yourself. Ah, uh, well, they're pretty good. They're reasonably decent. <coughs> oh, we're up to temperature. Should just pop right out. That's gone. That should pop right out. Yep, we got the coil off. So we've cleared what we need to clear over there. Now I'm pretty sure I can turn that off. I don't think there's any more through hole stuff. We want to get these off. King bow, yeah. Yeah, I got this stuff as well. I sent a uh, computer boot on one of these. I don't think he liked it though. So let's check the chat. If you're going to clone something, at least give credit where credit's due. Yeah, right. I like this tool. I don't want to spend the money, though. Oh, you're talking about the desolder gun? Yeah. I mean, you can get away with just a desoldering pump, but, you know, if you're doing, like, retro consoles with, a, like, massive uh, banks of pins to desolder for chips and what have you, then... Yeah, you know. Hey, Glenn, welcome. Um, but yeah, anyway. So, let's see if we can get these off. Uh, probably going to go for a slightly bigger tip to do this. So let's just pop this one out. What tip do I want? What tip do I want? Where's my favourite tip? There it is. I'll use my favourite tip. Should do it. My ZD nine one five broke, and I'm looking for a replacement. Someone here know any good alternative? Well, the best one you could get is a Hako FR three hundred one. It's worth the money, but it depends what your budget is. It's like anything in life, right? You know. Right. I've got a bit of solder on this too. I think I might switch to the microscope view, actually. I don't really need it, but let's do it. People can see things better that way. Well, they could if it would actually display. Why is that not displaying anything? What's going on here? Ah, there we go. Right. a bit better. There we go, there's our targets. But yeah, if you want a better alternative than the ZD915, uh, 
Paco FR 301. Otherwise, you're just still buying budget stuff, and that budget stuff's all roughly the same. It's just rebranded different brands of the same stuff. Probably gonna have to force these off, you know. Thinking about it, they seem pretty glued on. Yeah, welcome. Hey, David, welcome. Good to see you on here, man. Q3, Q4, they're voltage regulators. Um, no, they're transistors. Transistors, not V regs. Try this again. Okay, so that's starting to wet. There we go, now we got it. There we go. Let's clean it up. Whack a bit of steel solder braid on there. I can find it. There we go. But yeah, booty Buddha. Uh, I see you online. Streaming your repairs. Streaming your PlayStation 3s. I don't know how you keep at that, man. Those PlayStation 3s are just a pain. while we're at it because why not actually $265 for the FR301 is a good deal I think I played closer to something like 400 for mine then again, that was during lockdowns and stuff, so yeah, I'm not that surprised it come down a bit. If you can get one for a couple of hundred bucks, though, yeah, it's definitely a, definitely a good deal, actually. Would recommend. Okay, that's pretty clean. That solder's off. While we're at it, let's just clean up the mess I've just made, shall we? So we'll get a bit of IPA on here. Yeah, the thing about the FR301, David, is it, it really depends what kind of work you're doing, right? I think for your kind of work, you don't really need it, do you? It's more for um, lots and lots of through-hole stuff, right? Excuse me. Well, if you've got a big bank of um, through-hole chips or something that you need to remove, they're brilliant. But I think a lot of the stuff you do is SMD, right? I don't know, just different use cases, right? There we go, that's a bit better. Try not to put a used Q-tip into my coffee. <laughs> All right, so if I remember rightly, let's make sure the camera focus is okay, which it ain't. So let's sort that out. It's wrong way, let's go that way. Yeah. So we gotta remove. C34, or is that R33? Yeah, we gotta remove R33, Q6, R32, R34. So those are right there. Drop the rusty screw in his coffee. Oh, lovely. 
Uh, what temp do I set the FR301 to? Right now I've got it set to, I've got it set to 400C, which is a little on the high side. But I like to keep the temperature hot and be reasonably quick with it. So, I mean, it depends what you're doing as well. Some boards are more delicate than others too, right? Like it's it's real easy to mess up if you're not careful with them. Okay, so I can probably just get these off with a straight soldering iron, I think. So let's give that a go. Right, if I come here. I don't really want to be using uh, hot air around the volume wheel. Although I've done it before. Let's get that resistor off. There we go. We've got the resistor off at least. I do need to get this transistor off. Uh, let's see. Can I do it with a solder and iron? I'm sure I have done it before. I can. We'll worry about that bridging in a minute, but there we go. Right, so we've got that off. do is we'll just welly a bit of flux down and uh, unbridge this. There's my tweezers, probably going to need them. There we go, sorted. Just like that. Now, if I recall, I'm going to have to double check this because I can't remember every resistor that needs to come off. I think possibly these two and I think if we look down here there is a couple of um, transistors I'm not sure if these two transistors have got to go but I'll have to double check that I don't want to just take them off and then <laughs> and them not be the ones that are meant to go so yeah also I think I can take this off too just double checking my work Right, I'm just going to double check what other pieces need to come off because I can, can't remember everything, so let's have a look. Yeah, Tom, this isn't like a straight, um, straight drop-in replacement like the Game Boys. It is a bit more complicated. It's not hugely complicated, but yeah, you are right. Okay, so it looks like I was kind of right. These two resistors need to go. These two. R29, R30. They've got to go. So let's get rid of them. off and then there was a transistor down here which was on its lonesome I think which one was it um, Q2 oh Q2 is not populated okay 
but R38 does need to go. So where's R38? I can see the pen there. There, okay, so that's got to go. Let's get rid of it. Howdy, Micro. Long time, no see. Uh, no, no, Glenn, they're not, they're not being replaced. Most of these parts that I'm removing are actually part of the high voltage circuit, so they just don't need to remain. Because the high voltage circuit's uh, primarily for the compact fluorescent tube on the thing. And, you know, just, that's not going to be there anymore, so. But, um, yeah, I think that's the main reason for it. I'm not 100% sure exactly why. Uh, what other cap needs to be? Where is this? Does it need to go? What is that? R41, R44, R43. Okay, so let's get rid of 41. Where's that? Right there. Target acquired. Target locked. Let's get rid of it. Get a bit of flux on it. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been out of the saddle a bit with YouTube stuff recently. To be fair, especially uh, electronics repair, I've been kind of avoiding it. You know, the irony is I've started it up again. Right as the energy prices are through the roof. <laughs> you there. You shouldn't be all the way bent back like that. Right, I think R44 does need to go. It does, so let's get rid of that as well. In fact, while we're at it, let's just get some flux on it too. So we get rid of 44, and 43 needs to go as well. 43 is a bit hard to get at, so let's just... Um, Move that out of the way for a minute. That should come off quite easy now. Q1, Q9 looks dodgy. Uh, I'll have a look in a minute. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the point. We'll have a look. We will have a look. That said, this is a working Game Gear. It's been recapped by me previously. It does work, so. But I guess improvement is improvement. Right, let's see if we can get the soldering iron in at this one. I don't know how well you guys can see that. There you go. It's right next to a cap I've put in. So if I'm careful. There we go. Nice and careful. Right, that's done. So we can pop that cap back. Yeah, PS3 Reball indefinitely killed my motivation for a while. It was just getting ridiculous. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd do the job and then it wouldn't work for whatever reason. I'd have difficulty diagnosing it and it was just a bit of a nightmare. I will give it another go. There's one PS3 I do need to get done ASAP, actually. Um, it's for somebody, so I need to get it done. But uh, who knows how well that's going to work. Although I have pre-baked that console an absolute like, ton, so it should maybe go okay. Maybe. So somebody said something about one of the Q1, Q9. Uh, where is Q1 and Q9? Let's see, Q5's fine. Uh, Q7's fine. That's Q9. Q8's fine. Yeah, Q9 looks okay to me. There it is. Looks perfectly fine to me. Q9, what was the other one you said to check? Let's have a quick look. Q9 
one just looks dirty. It's just got cotton on it. It's got cotton from cotton swabs, probably from when I did the recap. If you have a look, you can see that's just cotton. And a bit of flux. Nah, that's perfectly fine. I see what you mean though, it kind of does look a bit... Yeah, I think on the camera it probably looks a bit dodgy. Nichicon, yes, I don't use the cheap caps. I use the good stuff, except this one random Panasonic. <laughs> But yeah, okay, so what else do I have to remove? Um, that's this side of the board. That's all we need to do on the removals. Although I could have swore when I last did it there was a replacement I had to do. Remove L2, remove Q6, Q2, remove Q3, Q4. Yeah, I've done that. Remove those, remove that, remove the CFL. Okay, no, I think we're good. I think that's it. I think that's it for the component removals. Yet to see a Game Gear in person postal. Oh, come on, man. You've missed out. You've missed out. They're pretty nice, to be fair. Now, I vaguely remember there was a... I'm sure there was a replacement that needs to happen down here somewhere. Where am I? Where, where, where? Who am I? Down here, near this oscillator. I could have swore one of these needed to be replaced or populated, but it's been a while. Let me just double check the install instructions. Revision 7996, 2ASIC, which is what this is. Remove, blah, blah, blah. Remove, 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 remove. Check by fold. Okay, we're good then. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the Game Gear LCDs, the originals, they're bloody awful. Absolutely terrible. I bet if, if I bet if he's still on computer booter, he'll attest to that. I bet he's done a few. Original Game Gear screens are bloody horrible. All right, so what I'm tempted to do now is chuck this in the ultrasonic cleaner. But then again, I can do that later, before we've installed the actual LCD module, because we've got to install the board and so on. So right, we can probably put this aside for a minute and pick up this because. This little board does have something convenient. It has quick solder points, which I think are right here. So what we can do, when this is installed on the board, it goes like this. Down like that. And 
and uh, what we can do is run the wires from these quick points we can solder to these quick points and run the wires on the other side where the L uh, this is the LCD side we'll run the wires on this side of the board but we can make it a bit of a cleaner install that way so that's what I'm thinking of doing so let's do that so I do need cutting our wire Last year I was at an estate sale and I picked up a full length C64 box priced at $200. I was mildly into it. I opened a box and it's a Genesis with a Sega CD and a 32X. <laughs> yeah, I'd buy that. It's still worth 200 For sure. Actually, before we do that, let's clean up this because we've got to we've got to tap into some points along here anyway. So what I'll do is I'll just put some flux down, some new solder, and then wick it off. That's what I think I'll do. So let's do that. Sega CDs are pretty easy to repair, from what I've seen. I wouldn't know myself personally because I've never done it, but I think for the large part they're just recap jobs. I think that's what tends to go wrong with them. So. And maybe you need to recalibrate the uh, CD-ROM, I don't know. It's easy enough if you've got an oscilloscope, though. In fact, I don't even really need to uh, put solder wick on this. I can just leave it on. a lot better. So yeah, my thinking is we'll get this um, soldered in place and then we'll use the uh, the quick points down here because we've got a solder along these parts here and we've got a um, tap off some of these cartridge slot pins as well. So that should go well. Uh, is that a Retro 6 shell with buttons? It is Adelaide, yeah. Absolutely it is. It's a red shell. It's quite a nice looking little shell to be fair. I know you can't see it so well there. I'll quickly show you. Um, there it is. In very nice condition because it's brand new and um, that is a retro 6 replacement game gear shell and that's the buttons that come with it or actually I think they're a separate order and um, the screws and the little um, expansion port cover thing so yeah Yeah, the Retro 6 buttons are generally absolutely trash. Like, the shells are nice, but the buttons are trash. I wouldn't recommend them. I know this this is for a customer, so it's their decision. It's not my decision on whether they keep um, originals or not. But they already know. They already know how these things are. Alright, so my thinking here is if we can line it up well, it doesn't have to be perfect, just well. About like that. And what we can do is just blob solder on to sort of secure this in position. Don't use the Retro 6 screws, they're too soft. Yeah, I can use original buttons, no prob. And blame me. If so. Well, the customer is uh, watching this stream, so...
James is right. They strip. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I've got plenty of original Game Gear screws I can use, though. Anyway, let's get this thing secured. Um, I'm probably going to want something to solder between there and there, there and there, there and there. Uh, maybe a little bit of wick. Not sure. I, or cap legs or something. Something like this. Let's see. Let's get the microscope view up. So what I'm looking to do is to solder the board in place, right? They they use this weird setup where there's like some pads that you kind of bridge to the original Game Gear pads. So let's do that. If it will go okay. I never like securing these. It's always a bit awkward. Yeah, I'm probably going to use a bit of wire to do this. Okay. I think the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to take this old fuse I'm going to solder it down this is fiddly and then bend the wire over to the pad and just solder it like that thinking is to just hold this in position, bend this round and down. You can probably see exactly what I'm thinking. And then if we just solder it down like that, snip that off. about there Yep, there we go. And we just do sort of same in the other corners just to get it nice and secure, right? So I'm thinking there with another wire. Think there'd be a clip. Yeah, it's all about price, isn't it? There's a few ways it could be done, I suppose, right? I mean, if the board was extended out a bit and they could just provide some plastic clips to clip it in, and that'd be that, you wouldn't have to solder it to the board. It'd also mean it'd be easier to remove it, right? You know, it's kind of common sense, but I guess it's all because things are built to a price, right?
But yeah, it is what it is. Don't make a huge difference to me really, it's just conveniences. I'm not too bothered. Not too bothered, a little bit bothered, but not too bothered. I should probably have pre tinned this pad to be fair, but oh well. Yeah, good. Just solder it down again. Hopefully that'll do the job. Depends on if it decides to desolder from the top as I do this, it might, but let's see. No, that should be good. Alright. Then just to be neat, we'll take off the excess. And then we got down here and down over here. So let's flip it around. It'll be a bit easier. Right, I'm just going to check the chat because I've been eyeballs to the scope for a little while. So let's have a look. Did you get the flat glass or 3D glass? Uh, just flat glass. You've been uh, 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 okay. Someone model the clip for the for 3D printing. To be fair, I could do that. Um, you don't need to 3D print a support for the LCD Adelaide. You can just sort of use adhesive to hold the screen against the uh, shell itself. It's not too difficult. That's what I usually do, to be fair. Although I could 3D print a bracket. Anywho, let's see if we can get away with this one. without the need. The problem is there's flux in the solder and that's making it wet nicely. I actually want less flux in the solder so I'm gonna have to burn it off a bit to get it to bridge. It's kind of funny, it's the one time you want something to bridge. prefer the bracket installation. Yeah, it's a better way, isn't it? There we go. That's done it. Support is much neater and you can easily open the console for repairs. Yeah, that's true. That is true.
can't can't argue with that. Oh god, come on, this is awkward. It's an awkward angle. This. Stop bridging the cap. There we go. That's what we want. Been practicing with a squeegee. I like it. Appreciate you, brother. Oh, thanks, Peter. Thanks, David. That's awesome, man. How are you getting on with that thing, anyway? Is it um, is it doing the job? Because I found when I tried it, it did work really well, but it was a bit fiddly, right? Like it's kind of hard not to get solder everywhere. I think it's a skill. It's a skill with that um, squeegee thing. Right, okay, great. So we got that. So the next thing I want to do then is I want to run wires from this to here. I think the neatest way for me to do it is to do it from this side of the board, from these quick points. So what my thinking is You know, I think I've been an idiot. Have I? Yeah, I've been a slight idiot with this. I probably shouldn't have installed the board yet. I probably should have uh, soldered wires first. I mean, it's not a huge problem. But that's kind of annoying. So, how do I go about this the easy way? Is there an easy way? Hmm. Oh, I could just use the pads at the top. So they're quick points, these ones. Ooh, what to do, what to do, what to do. Could I get my soldering iron under there without mounting anything? I guess I could. Yeah, I know, there's this uh, hole up here that I can use. That's if I use these pads here. I was thinking though of just using these quick points um, here. Because you can use these too. I guess I still could use these. I just want to keep things nice and neat. Quick points are more convenient if you've not been an idiot and soldered this board into place before doing the wires on the board. I should have done these wires first because I think the ideal way would have been to solder them from this side and then run the wires on this side of the board. Never mind, let's just do it the old way. We'll do it the old way. So we've got these points up here. Not a problem. So first of all, I guess I'll tin these up. I think what I'll do is just knock the temperature of my station down. Knock that down to 300. Put it up to about 380. These Game Gear boards are a bit cheap and um, if you go too hot you can easily take pads off of them. So I don't want to do that. There we go. It's convenient to play blah, 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 blah. Booter's the daddy. Yep, yeah, Booter is the daddy. Um, yeah, I didn't know about the quick points on my first install because my first install was with a, um, what do you call it? A V2, V2 board, and it wasn't labeled, so I had no idea. Okay, that's all tinned up. So now it's time for Kynar Wire. Um, are they mentioned in the 
official guide? They might be. I don't know. It does mention that they exist, but that's it. It doesn't really tell you what they're for. I guess it's not a huge deal. Those are crap. Uh, these. Not fiddling around for a decent pair of wire snippers. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, the squeegee thing's a cool idea, isn't it? It really is a neat little, um, neat little tool. Oh, come on, that's terrible. I think there might be now, Booter. You, uh, God, I'm trying to remember the name of the firm. I'm pretty sure they ship globally these days. Uh, Insat, I think they're called. They make them themselves. Yeah, they're called Insat. That's definitely right. solder on that pad. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like for you, uh, boot, uh, it probably depends on what your customers want, right? Like the FP screens, I don't think they're true funny playing. I think they're like a company pretending to be funny playing. You know how like some sellers on AliExpress are. I mean, it's got funny playing branding on it, but that doesn't mean much. But anyway, um, the advantages are cheaper. But, you know, I think the install is a bit more complicated. So the trade-off is like what you charge your customers in terms of labor, right? <laughs> like you've forgotten the word, the letter L. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I don't know why. I don't know why you guys forgot the L. But you did. And that's okay. We forgive you. Both are valid. There's crazier things to be arguing about. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to be arguing about solder and solder. There we go. 
obviously I will clean up the um, excess wire sticking out when I'm done. Stripping wires to boot away. I'm using my teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's quite nice. the chat a bit as I'm doing this. I know I'm not being super engaging right now, but let's see what folk are saying. Actually pronounce it closer to the French word that it comes from, which is funny considering how you pronounce other French origin words like niche. Yes. English is basically just every other language smashed into one language and it pretends to be a language of its own. That's basically English. So French words, German words, probably a bit of Dutch in there somewhere. Sold it so far. CL2, D1, D0, DW, D2, D3, NU1. So presumably, C sync is the last one I need, I think. Yeah, and that should stop anything shorting out as well. Now we'll just pick out the uh, bits of wire we just snipped. There we go. Ooh, I'm getting a hankering for nicotine. evil drug. Right, that's good. <sighs> the English can be blamed for most things. Yeah, true, Glenn. True. State of this country now. RWL 2012, hello. 
Just join one hour or more in. Am I really that far in already? Oh, God. We got spam. I've got to get rid of that. Hang about. Terrorism as well. <laughs> See you, dude. Uh, Tom Leach, you don't need cameras and so on. So let's see what what's going on. What's what's what what's folks saying? So the the chat went a bit mental. So let's have a look. Okay, that's a niche rather than quiche. That's an RW. I got to start fixing more. Yep, yep. Get get on that, Luke. Feel like my repairs kind of suck. Well, you will do. Everyone feels like that, no matter how long you've been doing it. Ah, uh, yeah, Roy, you're absolutely right. It is kind of crazy that people allow all these weird names, isn't it? I repair stuff all the time. I just don't record it for the enjoyment of others. Yeah, exactly, Tom. You don't have to need, like record anything. I have a, I have the case of a General Electric flip cop clock sitting in retro bright bath right now oh nice get all retro bright in eh? all right so i've got to do backlight clock ggsms as well okay so that's another couple of cables i've got to do p1 and p2 all right let's just get them their wires out of the way for now so down here we've got backlight, clock, GGSMS, so let's do those. Yeah, I like doing these, they're kind of relaxing to work on. They're pretty, pretty straightforward, takes me a little while, but you know. Oh, I seem to remember the brightness wheel needs to be wired in as well, doesn't it? So let's do these points. These points might not show up so well on the camera. They're kind of under the cart slot. So let's... Yeah, you guys won't be able to see what I'm doing here. But should be all right. So I've got backlight clock GGSMS. All right, so let's get some wires for those. I assume G is General Electric. Excessive amounts of Kynar wire right now. I think clock taps into FB1 if I remember right.
Now then, I want to keep this nice and neat. There's my tweezers. Fiddly as heck doing this sort of stuff. And there we go. just applying a bit of heat to the end of the wire it should strip back the insulation a bit it usually does burning it off It was a fiddly job this one, come on. There we go. Sorted. Reasonably neat too, kind of. Kind of. Right. Hey, Max. Yeah, I'm doing okay, mate. I'm doing okay. I've got um, your thing to do yet, if you're the max I think you are. I'm pretty sure you are. I baked the living heck out of your PS3. It's had about 15 odd hours of being baked. So it shouldn't warp when I actually come to do the job. All right, let's get the GG SMS wire on there. Why is the clock chip loose? What? What clock chip? What are you talking? I don't know what you mean. Do you mean why is the clock chip not on the board? Like why there's no clock chip on there? They don't even provide one. All they give you is a couple of uh, resistors, I think, and whatever that is. Yeah, a resistor. They just give you resistors. They don't give you a clock a clock chip. <laughs> X1. Yeah, there's no chip there. There's there's no chip on the board. See? It's unpopulated. It's optional for if you have an unstable um, clock when you tap onto the board. I've, I've, ne I've never actually had a problem. A lot of people have. I never have. So, I don't know. But yeah, nothing here is loose. You know, that, that that's solid. That's solid on. You know, it's not going anywhere. Right, GG SMS. Let's get the wire for that on there. I want that to be kind of long as well. Right, that 
should do it. Yeah, I'm probably going to disappear in a minute and switch my ultrasonic cleaner's preheating cycle on so that I can throw it in when it's uh, all wired up. Because obviously once, once the LCD's there, I can't, but like now I can. So, yes. Okay, so we got those wires. I'm pretty sure I need two wires to the backlight pins that go under this cartridge slot that you can't really see too well. Maybe I can show you on the scope a little bit, maybe. I know it's completely out of focus, but let's see what I can do about that. So yeah, there's under the cart slot. I'm pretty sure I have to tap these two P1, P2 lines and um, solder that to the brightness wheel so that there's brightness control. We do have to wire these as well, actually. So that's one, two, three, four. Okay, let's not forget those. I suppose the nice thing about seeing this live streamed is you can see that it's not a super quick install. They do take a little while. Camera illusions. The camera lies. The camera's a lying git. Alright, if I remember rightly, these wires don't need to be super long. I can't remember where they all go, so I'm going to have to look that up. But Oh crap, I just dropped my Kynar wire. Ugh, like a clown. Funny, there are quite a lot of wires on these installs. I always, I've kind of forgot how many wires it takes. I want to keep it nice and neat as well. And I can tell you, cameras definitely lie. I mean, they lie about me because if I, you know, they make me look hideously ugly, and obviously I'm not. Nah, it's not true. Yes, I am. <laughs> Boy, but yeah, anyway, I, you know, I've not been around for a while. How is everybody doing? Not 
use of these reasonable hours? Well, probably because uh, I can sleep a bit better at the minute. I couldn't last week, though. Sleep pattern was awful last week. Right, and then there's the two wires I've missed for brightness. And I'm probably going to need a little bit of extra kind of wire because I don't think this is going to be long enough. Or is it? So it's got to come out from under there. Oh, brilliant. They put P1 and P2 on the other side of the board on this revision. That's handy. I don't didn't even need to do what I just did. Great. Awesome. That'll be neat. So I can just go from there straight across. Amazing. Awesome. Okay, I'll do that. That's way better. Let's get the focus a bit better. Over here, there are two pins for the brightness wheel. I think it's this one and this one that I've got to tap into. Yeah, it's a nice little mod, this one, Roy. Well, if you have a Game Gear, it's a mod worth getting done or worth doing yourself if you're into soldering. come right across and then we're going to solder there and on the other one too so about there It's years old solder, so let's just freshen this up a bit before we solder to it. So right, right, let's see the chat, what's going on. Um, mm, just watching for Retro 6 to get the battery packs back. Oh, waiting for Retro 6, okay. Easy on the wall of text there, RW. Although actually, that's a reminder. I know you're not spamming, really. But, like, I do need to get a bot set up to prevent that. Right. Back to 
to it though. Let's do the other one. So we want that there. Boom. Need a bit of flux on that actually. That's not a good solder joint. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, there we go, come on. Right, cool, should do it. do is burn off a bit of the insulation on this as well. Yeah, and whoever it was in my chat who suggested cutting wires to the correct lengths if you do this professionally, I don't do it enough to need to do that, but you're absolutely right. If you were to do this regularly, it'd be awesome to just have like pre-cut wires good to go. Did I just break the wire? I no, I didn't. Cool. Okay. Right. There's my tweezers. I'm getting a bit too fiddly. There we go. Oh, I'm really pleased there's like two points for that on this side. That's good. I like that. I'm going to clean it up a bit now. Game Gear, I had an issue with the screen pads along the bottom, so I tried to veers instead, and that was so much easier. Yeah. Right. What we'll do, I'm going to clean up this area. I'm going to try and make these wire installs just a bit neater than they are. They don't look awful, but I think I can do a little bit better than we've got. So, where are my brushes? Here they are. And where's my alcohol? Splash some of this in my coffee. Bit of 99% IPA in my coffee. That, that'll get me going for the evening. <laughs> Set myself blind. Do you know what, it's funny, I've not done one of these in probably a year and a half and I can kind of remember how to do most of it off the top of my head. 
I'm almost impressed with myself. I can't remember what I had for dinner yesterday. Well, I can. I actually had instant Idaho and mashed potatoes with like baked beans because I was feeling lazy as anything. But anyway. You know what I mean. just want the IPA to dry off a bit on that. And what I'm going to do is uh, glue the wires together. I want a real nice clean install for this one just because I'm intending to do the same on the other wires too. I'm going to glue them together once they're soldered in place. Get something nice and neat. That I think this needs a bit more IPA clean up. Need to build an extractor. Yeah, you can do it. Just get yourself a server blower fan and stick it in a project box or something, and then just put a extraction hose on top. Fairly straightforward. You just buy yourself a PWM fan controller to control the um, output of the fan. Dead easy. It's all my fume extractor is really. Although I didn't make mine, I bought mine. I kind of half designed one actually for 3D printing and then never finished it. Another one of my many million and one projects. Something I should get around to doing actually. Okay. That's probably good enough. Right, I'll be back in just a second. I'm just going to grab my super glue. Is that a repair on the button contacts? What are we talking about? Oh no, that's probably just where I've splashed a bit of solder on there. I'll wick that off. Easy enough. So no, not a repair, it's just um just a splash of solder. Okay. Super glue. Not sure if blocked, probably. Oh, my luck. Yeah, I think that one's blocked. Oh, I'll grab my other tube. Back in a sec. Yeah, that's basically the rule of it, Adelaide.
That's just how it works. Oh my god, what's happened to this tube? Oh damn. <laughs> I want to see if it still comes out. I don't know. super glue or it's just refusing to I think it's hardened in the tube actually can't tell typical <sighs> I guess that's not an option then just try clearing out this tube Oh yeah, there's glue in this one. That's good news. It won't come out. There we go. Get a bit more of that on there. Never rule of the universe, never rely on super glue. Yeah, nothing wrong with super glue. As long as you can get it out of your tube. Got a mostly neat wire there now. Mostly, but I'd like to put a bit of glue on this bit too. Cool. While that happens, I'm going to uh, have a moment to vape. Because why not? You know, I think it might, might look quite cool vaping across the desk. Let's have a look. <laughs> this is what happens when you're waiting on glue to dry. <clears throat> yeah, I really should buy more super glue actually. It's handy to have. Right. 
Right. While I wait for that to dry, I'm just going to look at the schematics and see what goes where. So, what do we have? What goodies do we have? Sold up P1 and P2. I've got to solve a GGS and S, VCC, ground. These instructions are crap, they're super low res as well. <laughs> So, let me just check to see that this is dry. If it's not dry, my glove will stick to it. I believe that's mostly dry. So, what we can do are uh, this nest of monsters. I think I'll bring that up there, and then I'll just probably glue all these together as well, just to make it neat, sort of bring it across like that. So let's clean it up, because it's, it's full of flux. to dry quickly so let's get some hot air on it that won't melt everything See, there's still quite a bit of flux residue on that, so I'm going to give it another pass. It's 
It's what I love about the ultrasonic cleaner. You throw something in there and it just takes it all off. It's amazing. Hey, Technic. Long time no see, which is my fault. But uh, yeah, good to see you, man. Been a little while. Yeah, and I see you too, man. It's nice seeing the same names pop up in the chat, you know. It really is. Okay, there we go. That should do that. Um, let's uh, give that another drying pass. Okay, that's not too bad now. So what I want to do is get these wires to be nice and flat and flush, kind of like a ribbon cable. So let's do that. So I'm thinking these bottom lines like that and then these top lines like that and we can put this one in the middle like that yeah that should be pretty neat so all we gotta do is kinda of pinch them bring them a bit closer in together And that should be more or less how I want. A little fiddly. do it really nicely actually I think that would be pretty good that would be very neat okay yeah RW if you weren't acquiring random consoles I'd think something's up with you <laughs> Call the police for a wellness check. Is RW alright? He's not bought a console in a while. Okay, that one is just dried up. So let's try this one. Yeah, I know, Felix, I know. I'm just mechanically moving it around. I know that. It's not like IPA causes it to completely vanish. But that's why it's going in the ultrasonic later. It's just to get it enough. Right, that should be enough. Then, if I can pinch 
attach it a little here as well. I'm just going to hold this for a minute. But yep, you're absolutely right, Felix. The ultrasonic cleaner technically only dilutes it as well and agitates it, so, you know, as long as it's good enough. Good enough, combo lad. Come on, you bugger. Hello, El Grey. Hello. Oh, come on. Always fiddly. Always fiddly. Always with a fiddle. Right. Where's that one wire? Not. to get a bit more glue on that. I've been drinking you all summer, is that weird? What? I don't... Are you alright? Do you need uh, do you need some help there, Felix? super glue you useful useful tool <clears throat> right I'm just gonna let that set for a bit too I'm actually gonna see if I can scrounge up some more super glue Pretty sure this one's dried out, but is it? Is that solid or is it? I don't know. It's annoying. You put the lid back on the glue, you leave it, and then you come back and there's like nothing left. It's ridiculous. Okay, there is actually a good amount of glue there, so let's 
Let's try and glue a bit more of this, shall we? You know what, I don't think that looks too bad like that, so I'm going to glue it there. Oh, I see you, Felix. Rare sighting of a wildcat deck. Only wild for you. <laughs> All right, take care, Felix. Have a good one. I realise watching cables being white, like glued together, isn't super fascinating right now, but you know, it's just part of the install, so. Sending more stuff to his streams more. <laughs> as long as it ain't links is. No more links is. Please. Please, no more kicking. <laughs> drop <laughs> okay that's a bit more glue left over I'm kind of rationing out glue here because I don't have too much left there you go glue it again up here all right cool To be fair, I'm probably going to have to meter these wires out to know which one goes where. Ah, 
<laughs> oh, no worries, RB. No rush. Ben Van Game Gear Everdrive car RW. Um, I've not looked into that myself, so I don't know. That's on RV King to answer. Although at this rate, with the way energy costs are going, playing games on a Game Gear is going to be the only affordable option left to people. <laughs> Have a good day at work, Earl Grey. Okay. The glue is doing a thing. <laughs> RW, if you want to look at um, info about things like Ben Ven, just uh, go to his website or maybe check his Twitter feed. To be fair though, if you want a um, Game Gear EverDrive, you can get them on AliExpress for quite cheap. but you know what I'm satisfied enough of it so let's pull it across like that and then down like that I might just tape these into this neat sort of shape. To be fair, it's probably going to be easier. Let's have a look. We got, yeah, that's just separated, so it doesn't really matter too much. Let's uh, get that wire over though. Get them over a bit. That's still pretty neat. Not perfect. Yeah, tape would definitely be easier be quicker as well. I'm going to use tape. Bit of Capton tape will do it. Wherever that is. Where is my Capton tape? Oh, right in front of me. Right in front of me. And skizzers. Skizzers. Where are these skizzers? Uh, I don't know. I'll just use a scalpel blade. I'm 
Let's just keep this install moving. Kind of stalled out with me gluing wires. Okay. too bad. Let's put that one there on the side. We'll put the next one. Again, I'm going to have to meter these out now, which is a little annoying, but it's not that bad. Alright, fortunately, I have a meter right here. Now then, let's start with, let's start with CL2. So that's what I want to meter out. So let's put this into continuity mode. to strip these wires a bit. First of all, let's see which one this is. Funnily enough, it's CL2. Nice. So we'll get this one soldered on. This one goes down here. So this is probably the most painful part of an LCD install is doing this bit that I'm about to do. And that goes to a pen. I need a better diagram. CL2 goes to pin 9 on the LCD ribbon connector portion down the bottom here, so that's CL2, and it needs to go to pin 9, so where's pin 9 along here, let's count, I can count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine, so it's this one right here. Just bear with me.
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's that one. So I get a bit of flux down on this because I'm not 100% happy with that joint. Okay, that's a lot better. Not going anywhere and it's not shorted out. Let's double check now that we've got continuity from the pad to the CL2 pad on the game gear. So if I zoom out, if I turn it around a bit, maybe I can get it all into shot. Maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, just about, so that's CL2 right there. Yep, we're good. <coughs> so that's a CL2 wire. What we got next? meter out this one D0 okay and uh, where does D0 go on the board that is pin 18 so let's go to pin 18 So from here we're going 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's this one. Snip this wire now. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, right. 
Hard to see through my flux now, that's kind of annoying. Right. Sliding. Let's go for it. Okay, let me double check I've soldered that correctly. So we're going from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So that's definitely on number eighteen there. So that's good. What is the next wire? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's meet this one out. So, what do we have? We have. D2. D2, I think, was pin 16. No. D2 was pin 39. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, this is ever so much fun when you've got to count pins. I said 39, didn't I? And that was 18. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. So 39 is this one right here. Again, because I'm very paranoid when doing this, I'm going to double check. So that is definitely 39 for D2. That's 18. So 19, 20. 36, 37, 38, 39. Okay, I keep coming at that same pad, so that's good. I believe it's right there.
any time consuming. Tyler Clearwater, my PS3 Catch A01 just died the other day after three replays over the last three years. Uh, it deleted, which gave it another month of life. Uh, Tyler, it's something I've dabbled with, and I do plan to do one PS3, and that's for somebody, but after that, no. I'm not going to be offering that to people. To be completely honest with you, it takes a really, really long time. And not only does it take a long time, but it's the kind of work where you get it done and then problems can still occur later on because it is quite an intensive process. You put a lot of heat into the board. It can do quite a lot of damage to it, actually, in the long run. So, no, it's not something I offer. I wanted to offer it, but I found that it's a rabbit hole to hell, that kind of work. You know, I spent hours on it. It actually demotivated me as well. Right, so I've done B2. So I've got to meter out the next wire, which I think would be this one. So let's see what this is. Right. This wire not beeping. No, 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 no. What's this wire then? What is this? Be C sync. Hmm. Hmm. Or is it GGSMS? Is that what you are? Nope. I thought it was C sync, so what is it? Bear with me, I gotta check a diagram. Oh, you gotta check a diagram. Solar panels help. Do you get enough sun? Well, I'm not sure I follow you. Oh, of course, I wouldn't use C Sync. C Sync's for uh, RGB, isn't it? Why don't I wire that up then? Are you 
You're asking me, Adam, are you? I'm not sure I follow the combo. on Game Gear, where bloody hell is that? Oh, it's down there. It's on the other side of the board, whoops. Oh, Adelator, I couldn't use solar power if I wanted to. I live in a flat, mate. When am I going to put a solar panel, right? Plus, my flat's north-facing, so... Good luck with that. <laughs> so, I'm going to give folks a little bit of context on energy, right? I'm sure everybody's thinking about it, particularly UK folks. US viewers, maybe not as much as we are, but, like... It's getting absolutely crazy. For context, I live in a one-bedroom apartment. Um, I consume around about 5,400 uh, kilowatt hours a year, and that's entirely electric. Right now, that's costing me £172 a month. But because the gas prices have gone up, even though I'm on electricity, our, our electrical grid is primarily... Uh, driven by gas and uh, renewables but the thing is gas accounts for about 40% of our power generation and um, is obviously vulnerable to market swings anyway long story short I've done the maths I've done the mathematics on this I've done the maths on this and for context a kilowatt hour next April should come in if you were to get a fixed tariff at 89 pence a kilowatt hour, which is about $1.04 in American. And the standing charge will be about 58 pence a day, which I think is something in the region of about 68, 70 cents a day. Um... Right now, Adelaide, and myself in particular, I'm locked into a lower rate because I took a better deal earlier in the year because I knew it was going to go up. I think what we're going to see, Max, Max, my prediction, like you say, your energy provider says it's 100% renewables. That's not actually true. What they do instead is they, um, they basically trade on the energy markets for something called regos. I can't remember entirely what these regos are, but they're basically uh, certificates that, um, it's something like a renewable uh, power generation certificate to say that it's 100% um, renewable. And they can buy and sell those on the market. Anyway, long story short is your power isn't 100% renewable. It's just certified as 100% renewable. A litre of gasoline or diesel. Uh, last I checked, um, gasoline was about £1.66. I think diesel was closer to £1.79, something like that. Quite expensive. Anyway, uh, going on from the energy thing, like I say, per kilowatt hour in electricity, um, come next April time, next April, next May, Assuming we continue on this trajectory, we're going to be looking at prices of uh, easily in the sort of 60 pence per kilowatt hour range, uh, right the way up to 89 pence, depending. So what that means is, the apartment I live in used to cost me around about £1,200 a year in electricity, it will go up to about £5,000 a year in electricity, which is absolutely insane. Like, absolutely crazy insane. There's no way people are going to be able to make it through this without some kind of government intervention. If they don't do anything, there's going to be rioting. 
you know, they'll be burning down the Houses of Parliament because, for context, I'm a working professional, right? I'm in a reasonably uh, well-paid job. I don't really want to disclose my salary, but, you know, I'm in a reasonably well-paid job. Um, and it's kind of a skilled job, right? With the price rises, I'm going to struggle. I can probably get through it, but I'm going to struggle. I'm going to have to cut back all of my discretionary spending. So where I'd normally go out to a pub to buy beer and things like that and hang out with friends, or maybe just, um, I don't know, buy the odd retro console off of eBay or buy the odd uh, product off of Amazon or whatever, I'm going to have to cut all of that back. All of it will be cut back to the bone. It will just be spending on energy and spending on rent and the other basics that are needed to survive. It won't be living, it will be surviving, right? And as I say, as a working professional who's relatively well paid, my, my view on it is a lot of other people in my sort of position will be doing exactly the same. They'll be cutting back to the bare minimum of spending because... Their energy is basically as much as their housing. You know, when you're spending as much money on your housing as you are your energy, you've not got that discretionary spending power. You're not putting money into the economy buying other things. And that means that all of the jobs that would support that, for example, Yeah, well, that's right, Roy. That's partly right. I mean, it's quite complicated, but the long and the long and the short of it is, we're in a really difficult situation. The Bank of England is going to be raising the base rate for interest. Yeah, exactly, Max. You're absolutely right. They're going to be raising the uh, interest rates uh, on the base rate. A lot of people mistakenly think the reason that they're up, they're increasing it is to fight inflation. That's not actually true. What's actually happening is in, in the United States, the Federal Reserve is um, increasing its uh, benchmark rate. Increasing its benchmark rate means that any other nation that's trading in US dollars for commodities and so forth, um, it basically means anything you buy in US dollars if you have a weak currency against the US dollar, costs more money. Because the Federal Reserve is raising its base rate to around 4%, and I've, I've announced that it will be about 4% for the entirety of next year, the Bank of England will respond by raising its own rates to at least the same amount so that it doesn't crush the economy on trading for things like petroleum, oil, and so forth, right? So we're in deep, deep, deep shit because... If you have a mortgage, for example, let's say you have a thousand pound mortgage, you've um, fixed for a like you've fixed for five years. You were a new buyer. You bought five years ago. Um, that thousand pound per month payment after your five year fixed term and after the balance reductions applied to a remortgage is going to cost one thousand seven hundred pounds a month on top of the energy rise. That's going to destroy people. People with smaller mortgages are probably looking at payments that would have been £350 a month, costing instead £480 a month. So, people configure their lives around their income. You know, people might buy a car and pay for it on finance because they know their income will cover those credit payments each month. But if suddenly all of your other bills shoot up by, like, quite literally thousands, you're fucked. What do you do? Oh, congrats on buying, Max. If you did buy, I hope you fixed your rate for quite a while. If you did fix your rate for quite a while, you should be okay in the short to medium term. It's the people who have got a remortgage or apply for a mortgage now are in, in trouble. But yeah, you're probably looking... Assuming that the uh, inflation isn't under control by the time your fixed rate's over, you're probably looking at a remortgage rate of about 6%. People remortgaging this coming year will be looking at about 6%. At least toward the end of the year. It's a desperate situation. And the fact is, this fucking country's an absolute joke. Oh, God, I'm ranting now instead of doing this in store.
<laughs> but um, yeah, it's absolutely insane. There will be rioting. I have no doubt in my mind there'll be rioting. Anyway, I've I've kind of done this backwards. I should have done the C sync as a separate wire. The C sync wire is in the wrong place. Uh, I've got to pull this tape back and move it. But yeah, I don't know what people are going to do. I've not a clue what people are going to do. It's madness. Absolute madness. But yeah, and the crazy thing as well is energy rates for businesses aren't capped. So if you're a small business, like, you know, a small family run restaurant or a pub or something like that, your energy costs are just, they're just going to destroy your business. You're going to be out of business, done, poof, game over, nothing you can do. That's it, closed shop, business gone, that's another employer gone, that's more people unemployed, you know. And small to medium businesses are the bulk of what people are employed by in this country, so we're looking at probably economic collapse if the government don't actually intervene with direct support. Not this tax cutting bullshit. Tax cutting bullshit's not going to do a thing. You cut the taxes, well that's not going to help if the reason that people are um, cutting back their expenditures is because of energy, right? You might cut 5% tax off of like things you can buy in a store, but what's that going to help if you don't have the money to spend in the first place? Ridiculous. Yeah, Max, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a depression this time. Really wouldn't be. Really, really wouldn't be. Right, I think C sync is here. Come on, C sync. Melt, melt your bugger. There we go. But yeah, I've been going down a uh, kind of whole of looking into exactly what's going on and the conclusion I've made is that we are in like absolutely deep 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 shit like really deep shit <laughs> you know right this wire needs to go down here is where it needs to be it needs to be at T2 which is just here But yeah, people with mortgages who are just getting mortgage rates are probably kind of shielded for now. But what I can see happening is as rates go up, which they will, there's a lot of people going to get foreclosed and people won't be able to get mortgages as easily either. And that will uh, combine to actually decrease and uh, deflate house prices as well. And as house prices deflate, there's going to be a massive wave of negative equity. It's going to be a shit show. 2008 is going to look like a joke compared to this. Like 100%. But, on the plus side, if you're a cash buyer, you can do quite well. So there is that. <laughs> Alright, there we go. I think that's soldered in okay. My mic is very low. Are you sure? Shouldn't be. Is it? No, it shouldn't be. It should be pretty high. Anyone else having problems? <laughs> 
Might as well pay for air, I know, right? It feels like that, doesn't it? <laughs> GG SMS. Okay. Right, so we've only got a few more data lines on this ribbon to do. So let's see what we can do about that. Also, let me know how the microphone sounds now. This should be a bit better. I just tweaked the volume up a bit. Hopefully I've not blown out everybody's speakers doing that. Is that better? I know there's a delay on this stream by about 30 seconds, so I'll know in 30 seconds time, but there we go. I've adjusted it a bit better. No, I can take it up more. Okay, the microphone is at maximum volume. Luke, what kind of work are you trying to get? I mean, I guess to be fair, we're all gonna be out of a fucking job soon, mate. <laughs> no one will be able to get a job. IT industry. I'm IT industry as well. Software developer. Turn back down to first increase. Why? Is it distorting? Okay, I'm going to stop messing with the volume. that should be a bit more reasonable volume level. I'm not going, yeah, I'm not going higher than this. Right, anyway, I'm just checking schematic again. Right, there we go. Right, so, so let's, uh, let's check this next wire and see where that's meant to go. But yeah, the economy is absolutely fucked. And the next Prime Minister, whoever they may be, is probably going to make it worse. <laughs> okay, that's D1, right. So D1 goes to pin 16. Right. That would be down here. Next to that. So that's pin 16 right there. Okay. So let's get this sorted out. Well, Josh, the thing is, normally, like, trying to let the market sort itself out has resulted in our energy bills shooting up to around about £7,000 a year come next April. £7,000 a year is uh, completely unaffordable for people. We have cold winters here, you know, you're talking about people freezing to death in their homes. The idea of free, free market economics 
under normal conditions works pretty well, but under this condition it's a crisis. So, you know, it's, it's just a tricky one, right? We kind of need some intervention this time round. And not one that prints money, because that's just going to make it worse. <laughs> you print money and you just, yeah, that's a dumb idea, but... Grumble, grumble, grumble. Grumble, grumble, grumble. There we go. Is that why I done? Next up we've got DW, I think. Well, let's see what this wire is. Like, I don't have the answers. But our government has to do something or we're going to lose our small businesses. If we lose our small businesses and our medium businesses, we're kind of boned. Alright, this is D3. Where did D3 go? Pin 57. Alrighty, so pin 57 is... Over here. So we'll count backwards. 68, 67, 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59, 58, 57. So it'll be that one. So right, I'm going to. I'm going to mark that with some tweezers. Ugh. 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68. Right, so that is definitely the right one right there. So. Snip the wire. Strip it back a bit. <laughs> yeah, the, the sad thing about um, the state of British politics at the minute is it, it's really ideologically driven to the point where it's stupid. I just want the country competently run. 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59, 58, 57. This one. Right here. Hey, I think that's got it. Sixty eight, sixty seven, sixty six, sixty five, sixty four, sixty three, sixty two, sixty one, sixty, fifty nine, fifty eight, fifty seven, and it was definitely fifty seven, right? Yeah, cool. Welcome back, Felix. I guess I've got to stop buying games and actually start playing them. Man, Max, you should see my collection. It's exactly the same thing. I've got shit tons of games and I just <laughs> haven't really started playing them. 
All right, so in theory then, this should be DW, which is pin 20. So let's find out, let's go down here. We should be able to snip that wire about there. Oh, flux is tasty. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> right, let me meter this out to double check that that is DW. It should be if it's been wired correctly. Yep. Yeah, I was just talking about the, uh, the energy crisis in Europe there, Felix. Um, yeah, we're in dire straits. We're in deep shit. Like, really deep shit. Sad times. May fix the PS1 first. Please, PS1s are actually not too bad to work on, you know. I want to install a ODE on one. You know, like the X station or something. Right, where's my flux? solder on that. I think that's got it. I have the same problem, what with energy. I think I might just start harnessing my own farts. I think that'll keep my flat warm. GG SMS goes on the other side of the board, so the screws are long gone, so I can feed through a hole here and take a shortcut. So let's do that. We'll feed through that hole. SMS pin 42 on the card slot. That's easy enough because that is this one right here. So that's that's real easy. We'll do that now. So let's just um, give it the snip. Dewey. Oh, I can't wait to throw this in the ultrasonic and have it coming up looking brand new again. <laughs> it's looking mess with the flux.
that means it should now be able to be compatible with actual Master System games as well. So that's cool. Right, there we go. Need to adjust the laser pot on the motherboard to be normal. Oh, on the PS1, oh man, you're going to need an oscilloscope for that job. Get yourself an eye pattern going and adjust it to the right voltage. Fun times. I know, because I've done it. <laughs> Alright, so I think most of the wiring is done. It's just these buttons now on the ground. The ground, I guess I can tap off anywhere. Yep, that's the ground. So... If I feed that through, I know you can't see this too well, but I will fix that in a minute. But if I feed this through, I like a so. And then we flip the board over to the where the wire is here. What we want to do is snip it, trim off a bit of the cable so that we've still got a bit of conductor left like that. Pull it back out and strip it back a bit. And then what we'll do is just solder that in. Now, if I meter this out, I should be able to get a ground on the main board. So where is the ground wire on here? There is a ground pad somewhere. Yep, so we've now got a shared ground between the mod board and the game gear. So that's good. So last but not least are the buttons. That's it, actually, I'll be right back. I've just got to throw on the uh, ultrasonics preheater. What voltage does the eye pattern on the PS1 need to be at? That's the question. God, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think the optimal range was about 0 0.9 volts, 0 0.92. Off the top of my head, I think it was 0 0.92. Uh, Console 5's tech wiki, for the, the page for the PlayStation, um, in the service manual actually has an example of an optimal eye pattern and the peak to peak voltages that you should be expecting to see like in an optimal scenario. So have a look in that. No, a multimeter won't work. Not not for um not for calibrating lasers. You really need an oscilloscope for that.
Okay. Oh, right, sorry about that. I was just putting the um, preheater of the ultrasonic on. The supersonic. Okay, so we've got the ground. GGSMS. I think the only thing I need to provide it now is VCC. Where's the VCC line? There, I forgot to solder it apparently. So let's solder VCC because we ain't gonna get power. It ain't gonna work without VCC. Because there's always something I forget, and this is a dodgy angle as well. But I can do it. I can do it. VCC, let's get some solder. Yeah, that's good. Tap VCC off the game cart port, I think. It's just five volts in you. Um, let's see, so if we bring this across. It's around about what is it? Pin six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so it's about one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I see it. So let's do the snippity snip. Right, see you later, Adelaida. In a while, crocodile. No worries. You did hear me see, say solder. I'm practicing. Yeah, I could say it like a brummy. Soiled her. No, I kidding. I kidding. It don't sound anything like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, there we go. So I'm gonna add a bit of extra solder to that pin. A bit of extra solder to that pin. Oh yeah, Felix. Guess what? I've been uh, I've been practicing. I can now say taco. See, I can, I can do this. I could I could be Murican. <laughs> okay, so I think we have VCC now. And if I'm correct, I think I can find a positive point of a cap, maybe. Depends. That's good. Right, so I've just got button one, two, three to do. So let's figure out where the heck those solder. Let's 
Button two goes to C30. So let's do that. Where's C30? C30, where are you? I'm coming for you, C30. There you are. Right, let's get it. Right there. So if I snip about here. And then I strip this back a bit. Yeah, that's good enough. I get a bit of flux onto the edge of C30, which I just had over here. Bit of extra solder. Extra solder. Right, that's that button done. So where does button one go? Button one goes to C29. Where is C29? Oh, there it is. Okay. If we go this way, we should avoid these posts as well. C29. Torco. <laughs> Torco. Torco. Yeah, that's okay. And the last one is button three, which is at C28. So we'll take that to C28. So we'll just snip this one as well. This is quite the involved process. Yeah, it sure is. Good enough. All right, so C29, a bit of flux. Where is C29? C29, where are you? Where are you? Or was it 28? 
No, it's C28. I'm just being a clown. Off by one error. Do you know what? I don't know where I put them. They're around somewhere. <laughs> They're floating around somewhere. I don't know. That's okay. That's come out all right. So, I think that might be all the wiring. I think. Let me just double check. So we have got CLK, GGSMS. We've got P1 and P2 for brightness already done. We've done these wires up here, we've got C-Sync soldered down to T2 down there. Uh, we've got all of the buttons done. We've got VCC correctly soldered. I think this may be good to go. I guess I can do a quick check now then. So let me switch over to the above head cam. If I can find my mouse. Let me just tidy up a bit. I don't think I've got much more soldering to do now, if any. I think all the soldering's done. So let's wrap up the solder. PSU, I think, if I can unstick the wires from the top of it. Come on. Damn it. Come on. There we go. Yeah, things are changing in the UK slowly, RW. Yeah, long time no see, Andrew. It's because I've not been around, and it really. But yeah, welcome to stream. No, it's not a trunk. It, it's a boot. It's because it, it's called a boot because that's where you put your boots, you know. <laughs> I made that up, but I'm sticking with it. Turn that off a second and we'll plug the LCD itself in. There we go. Let's grab a game.
Okay. Will it work? That is the million pound question. That was drawing a lot of current. That was drawing a really lot of current there. What is going on? Is something shorted to ground. Something must be shorted. Yeah, oh, oh indeed, I think I might have even seen smoke there. That was drawing like two amps, so that's not good. I think we have a short to ground though. Hmm. Let me try on the power board separate from the game gear. Let's see what we get. Got the smoke. Yeah, power board's bad. Figures. Yeah, we got magic smoke there. That was interesting. We had smoke coming off of it. Ooh, it smells like it too. Which bit burned out? Well, I'm not going to worry about that. I've got spares, so... Power board equals magic smoke. Yeah, you got it. You got it. That's a shame. Right, hang on. Let me grab another one. Couldn't be the magic caps. Could be. They were replaced. I mean, the caps should be good on it. Maybe I put too much... Uh, too high of a voltage through and it's cooked something. And then it's just gone uh, short to ground on the power board. That's probably what's happened. Hang on, what would it be? 1.5, 1.5, 3, 4.5. Do you know what? I think I've just put too high a voltage through it. I think I set it to the voltage and I have it on on a Lynx. And I've ended up putting like 7 volts through what should have been about 4.5 thinking about it. Oops. Up you come, power board. All right, I'll do. Hmm. 
Oh, it's actually set to six volts. I'll put it down to four. Oh my god, I think I know what I did. Oh, I'm a dumbass. <laughs> I know what I did on it. I know what I did on it. I connected ground to positive and positive to ground. Derp. I did done goofed. Never mind. Where'd I put that power board, actually? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? That would explain the magic smoke. Me, professional? No, oh, far from it. Me, I'm a clown. <laughs> Oops. What we'll do though, I guess there is more soldering needed, is we'll just recap this little power board. Because it almost certainly needs it. Yeah, I was a little surprised by that too, Felix. I mean, what happens if you put your batteries in the wrong way around, right? Which is something kids would do. Never mind, do these things happen? That's one cap. Do this one too. Got it? Yeah, okay, so I should just be able to pull this one out too, with any luck. Done. Now I did just manage to create a bridge, so let me fix that. I think they share the same pad anyway. Yeah, they do. That's not a route. That wasn't technically a bridge, then. Never mind. Still looks better, though. Right. Um, the solder gun is on, so... I might as well just clear the holes with the desolder gun.
this one. So much easier than desolder wick. And there we go, that's clear. That's clear, and that's clear. Right. Actually, I do want the desold again. I'm going to salvage caps from this board because these caps should be fine. That's one. Man, it really sounds like I'm just letting rip. Just letting one go out. Everything's fine, James. Nearly done. We're doing a test in a minute. I cooked a power board, but that was an accident. <laughs> okay. Alright, that's one done. Yeah, yeah, they're the right way around. You can tell there's a marking. There's a little white marking there which indicates uh, negative. The negative lead. So, yeah, they're the right way. Although, to be fair, it is an easy mistake for somebody to make to get the polarities wrong. Hmm. Okay. Ah, that's better. There we go. That's what I wanted. And then last but not least, the final cap. Let's get this one. Just here.
fiddly as anything, this. Oh, yeah, something I've not mentioned on any platform, I don't think, is uh, I've taken up drone piloting as well. It's quite fun. A lot of fun, actually. <clears throat> God, there's a lot of glare on that image, isn't there? There we go, right, we, we've got another power board recapped. Right, that's fine. Okay. So, there we go, another power board. Um, so the spring is a negative. Definitely. I'll power that on. We've got that set to 4.5 volts. It normally has six AAs, which I think is nine volts. Three, six, nine, yeah. So 4.5 shouldn't cook it. Okay, it hasn't exploded. Right, I think that's good. So I'm just going to measure the pins with the multimeter and let's see what we get. Switched on. Is that the on position? I can't remember. Let's have a look. Yeah, that board's working fine. Oh, Felix, it depends on the day you upload to YouTube. If you upload on a Sunday, uh, it's going to be slow as heck. Because that's what the powers that be have ordained. And it's probably just because of the sheer volume of people uploading on that day. I know today's Monday, but... Eh. We had output for a second. Let's see if it's the game. Yeah, it might need more than 
let's nudge it up a bit. Uh, but let me just disconnect this terminal just in case. So let's nudge it up to about 5 volts. 4.85. Let's try it at 5 volts. Yeah, that got further into its boot cycle. I think it's just low power. So if I unplug that, if I ramp this up to about... Because it should be about 9 volts on batteries, I think. Yeah, it needs 9 volts. You're probably right. Eight point five will probably do it. Boom. That works. We're looking good there. Well, RW, let's try your theory. Let's go down to 5 volts on the PSU, shall we? So let's go down to 5 volts. We'll, we'll do 5.1. Let's see how that does. There you go. So that's 5.1, and if we go down just a smidge more, so you say it can regulate down to 5, so we'll try exactly 5. It's managing 5. Yep, and then if we go down just a tiny bit more, we're now in 4.9 territory, it's a borderline, yeah. Yeah, so there you go, confirmed. But I'm not taking it higher. <laughs> I'm not taking it to the upper limit. Lower limit, I'm fine with. Upper limit, nope, not touching that. Right, okay. So the good news is the LCD installs work. We know that, it's good as, you know, right as rain, that. That's exactly what we wanted. I'm really glad I don't have to fault find on my soldering of the, all the data lines and stuff, so that is good. I am very happy with that, so we'll pop that out of the way. And the next thing to do is the install into the shell. <laughs> true, right? Yeah, true. Take it to the upper limit just the once, and we're all good. So there we go. I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is disconnect the uh, LCD. I'm not going to install it into the thing yet. I do want to run it through the ultrasonic. Just to get all the flux residues and so on off. So let's just get this ribbon connector up. There we go. Actually, you know what? I've got another LCD that I'm not sure if it works or not. I'm just going to try that real quick. <sighs> yeah, I've had this one knocking about for a while and I think it's compatible. So I just want to see if it actually works. Just clean dust off the contacts. Yeah, this LCD's been sitting on a shelf for about a year and a half now. It might even be longer than that. I think I got it around the beginning of the pandemic. 
That tells you how long ago it was. Um, did I put Sonic away like an idiot? Yeah, I did. The Queen says my Mountain Dew is being very unpatriotic. What's hilarious is this is e-liquid, it's not Mountain Dew. I don't know how they get away with it because that is the exact like, logo, isn't it? Oh yeah, I put the voltage too low. Yeah, it looks like it works. It's just the uh, game's not being read properly. Session in the ultrasonic should help clean up that cartridge slot a bit, actually. Yeah, that works too. Neat. Both LCDs work. Great, I've got a spare then, haven't I? I thought I did. It's good to know. Evening, Chris. Evening, Pops. Well, I am a man of little faith. If I've left an LCD lying around for like a year and a half, I don't know why I left it, so I, I wasn't sure if it was busted or not, but I'm glad it's not. That's good news. Hey, Lee. Uber Micro, welcome. How's, how's tricks? Remember, don't use the Retro 6 screws, they are junk. Duly noted. Duly noted. But yeah, we're looking good. So the mod's basically good to go. That's the screen that came with it. That's my screen, so I'll put that away. Um, okay. What time are we on? Nearly 10 o'clock, so I'm probably not going to do anything after this. Uh, what I will do is chuck all this in the ultrasonic cleaner in a minute along with this audio board. Oh, and I do need to scavenge a speaker for it as well. On the other shell. Let's tidy up this mess. Tricks are tricky. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> CD finds your lack of faith disturbing. All right, Vader. All right. Now, it has come to that all important time. That all important time. Where I get a nice hot coffee. Saves me boiling the kettle multiple times and crippling my... Like having to take out a second mortgage to pay for the electricity. Thermos, that's the way. Mm, that's nice, that. Recently I've taken to having my coffee with... Um, oat milk. And oat milk in coffee is surprisingly good. Like, I really like it. More than I like regular milk in coffee. Real good. Would recommend. We've swapped roles, Felix. You are now British, and I am now American. Which means I need to say shit like, um, freedom! M rights, America. Bald eagles and shit. And what you need to say is, uh, yeah, yes, pip pip tally ho. <laughs> mm. 
yeah, I'm ha I'm happy with this. This has come out okay. It's gonna look, it's gonna be a lot better when it's gone through the ultrasonic. It's gonna look like it's new. It's not bollocks. It's bollocks. Bollocks. Think of it if it, if, if it was written as B O L L O X. Pronounce it that way. That's how it's pronounced. Bollocks. It's not spelt that way, but that's how it's pronounced. Ball looks close enough. <laughs> do you know what? I love Scotland. I really do love Scotland. It's a great place. I went up to, um, oh, what's it called? Ben Lawers. Ben Lawers. And uh, there's a spot near Ben Lawers Dam a few miles away that me and a mate of mine like to wild camp at, and it's bloody brilliant. I hate the midges, those Scottish midges can eat a dick, but like, the area is fantastic, it's so good. Back again, guess who's back, guess who's back, Wayne is back, Wayne is back. <laughs> now, nah, Scotland's where you go if you want to do some amazing wild camping. One, it's legal there. Two, the people are brilliant. Um, as long as you're not in Glasgow. And the Glaswegians are brilliant too, to be fair. You know. Can just be a bit rough. Right, anyway, what I'm going to do is go dump this in the ultrasonic. So I'll be back in a minute. It should be hot now, I think. having a blast in the ultrasonic so that shouldn't be long give any look oh Felix it's stupid in England in England you can't camp most places because pretty much everywhere is private land But yeah, the, the, like England is not as free as like Scotland is in terms of, well, in literal terms, it's just not as free. You, you're not as free to, to wander around and explore or anything. Which is a shame, really. Again, like I say, I love Scotland. Great place to be. Yeah, you can go to campgrounds. You can go to campgrounds. But you can't, like, go to uh, just random forests and stuff. I mean, you can, but if you get caught, you'll get moved on. I mean, to be fair, you can stealth camp, right? It's not legal, but you can do it. But me and my mate, we like to just go out to the middle of nowhere, take a crap ton of booze with us, and just get wasted in the middle of nowhere and not be bothered by anyone. I mean, we always take our mess with us. You know, we don't leave mess everywhere. Stealth camping YT channels in UK. Yeah, there are. Yeah, I've seen a few. I've seen a few. Some people get busted. It depends where you go. Like I say, me and my mate, when we go camping, we're just camping, like, basically to relax, right? Like, where we where we camped in Scotland, there's a, there's, a, there's a little river. And you can wade out. Well, it's not even a river. It was a stream. Just a fairly wide stream. And you can wade out to this rock that's in the middle. So me and my mate would wake, wade out to this rock with beers and we'd sit on this rock and just drink booze like on the middle of a rock in a stream. Quite relaxing. It's really nice. We also decided this year to walk down this stream and um, we decided to wade through a giant pool, pool under a waterfall and then wade down the, like, the stream just for the hell of it, right? And... Um, <laughs> it's so funny this my mate tripped over 
and disappeared under the water for a second and I was busting up laughing when he did it and because I was also in the middle of this big pool that's quite deep it was, it was about six six foot deep but in some places seven eight foot deep and my mate just misbalanced and he went straight under and I was laughing that hard that I fell under as well <laughs> I ended up swimming on my back to get out it was quite fun though Booze is like water, not in England, it's not, mate. That English booze is good. Oh, let's have a look at this bad boy then. What we got here? Nice little shell. We got the new screws that I've been advised against. We've got the buttons. I know these buttons are shit actually, so I won't use those. Um, I do need to salvage some though. Repressed in England, yeah, tell me about it. That's why you guys rebelled. Don't blame you. Might join you. Might join you as a fellow rebel. <laughs> Wish I hadn't super glued this speaker in now, because it's going to be hard to get out. that hard. Yeah, the problem with Retro 6, I know uh, this belongs to RB King, because it's, you know, it's his gang gear, and um, yeah, I think Retro 6 just had a limited selection of shells. I know this wasn't the first choice. Probably supply chain related, to be fair. Right, let's give this a good... In the US, I'll bust you for that immediately. Well, it depends on the park, right? In the UK. I think it definitely depends on the part. Oh, yes, where is that? Um, I'll show you my new toy in a minute that's pretty cool. Hey, it's a Game Gear. You got it, Italian. You got it. It's a classic Game Gear. I've just ran the actual board through the ultrasonic. I need to flip it over, actually. I'll be back in a sec. I'm back, and uh, this is my latest toy. Nice little drone. Really fun, this thing. So good. 
Watch this. I love this about this thing. Boom. How smart is that? It's such a cool, uh, it fly, it's so incredibly stable as well. It's really surprising. Like this small thing that weighs next to nothing, it can sit there in winds of about 20, 25 miles an hour and it won't budge. It will just sit there dead, like rock solid stable. It's really surprising. It's really cool. It's got ridiculous range as well. It can fly about 10 kilometers, I think, is its max range. And it has a first-person camera view there, which is gimbaled as well, which means the camera's really steady. So, so much fun. I'd recommend getting one of these to anyone. You do need a license, though, but, like, it doesn't cost much. Because it's Britain. You got a license for that? But yeah, I love how compact this thing is as well. It's so cool. Like, how, how neat is that package, right? It's so neat. There's 4K, genuine 4K too. Not like fake 4K. But yeah, the camera quality is surprisingly good on that thing. Remember to snip the post of the security screw flush. Yeah, I know, James, I know. I've, I've done this a few times, because if you don't snip that, then you're going to break the LCD. In fact, I'll do it now. Something to do while I wait, isn't it? Right there. There we go. Jobs are good. Oh, actually, I need to get a glass pane as well. Uh, Let's see. One of these will do. That one will do, I guess. They're all the same. I'm going to have to give the uh, Game Gear PCB a bath in uh, isopropyl because obviously I need to drive out the water that I've just added to it with the ultrasonic. Yeah, decent plastic this. Um, actually, something I've got a project in the works which might interest a fair few of you, my viewers. Um, but the project I've got in the works is I'm planning to make a handheld game console by modifying an existing console, a retro console. I've not decided which one yet, but I'm leaning toward a Nintendo Wii because other people have done it. So there's a fair few reference documents and stuff I can use. But anyway, I think the thing that's going to be interesting about the one I plan to make is I'm going to use my resin 3D printer. And a resin 3D printer basically gives results that look, you know, equally as good as this, say. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know it's not cast. I have a photo on Mono X, so I'm planning to uh, design a proper handheld chassis. And I'm going to um, basically cut up a board, fit that board in from the retro console, basically just jumper all the traces that need to be jumpered, because I'm probably going to have to fold the board. You could give the one chip Atari 5200, same as Ben Heck did. Yeah, well, I might make a Wii gear. That's exactly it. I, I might make something like that. There's a fair few ideas I've got knocking around, right? And I've actually got some parts to do um, a NES RGB mod as well. Actually, to build the NES completely from scratch, I've got the PCB printed and everything as well, so... One of the open Tendo boards. Yeah, exactly, exactly, Felix. It's it's a loading thing, but I'm getting my motivation back. I've been quite demotivated from doing repairs for a while, but 
it's coming back to me. Maybe it's a winter thing. It's seasonal. I want to work with electrics in, in the winter. Anyway, I just got to go grab that um, Game Gear out of the ultrasonic and give it a quick rinse around in isop isopropyl. So I'll be back in a second, folks. Season of the I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. Oh, well, yeah, it's like the reverse. <laughs> So that's looking pretty nice. Oh, a rubber key specky and someone was throwing it out. That's a crime. That's just criminal. Oh, that's criminal. Those old speckies were cool. ZX Spectrum rubber key, yeah? Yeah, they're, they're, they're a classic. I suppose super glue in those wires was a dumb idea anyway, because I'm only bathing it in alco alcohol, it would have dissolved it. Oh, actually, I did forget to do one thing. I've got a blob of solder on here, didn't I? I should take that off. I'll do that now, actually. Got a tiny blob of solder on one of the buttons. Just let me sort that. I remember many, many years ago when I was a student, um, I was stopping in a house uh, that was basically all student housing on the same street, and um, I found a PS2 Slim in, in the bin, took it out, there was nothing wrong with it. Actually no, I think what, no, there was something wrong with it, I think it was skipping, and it was a really easy fix, I think I just cleaned the laser, and that was it. <laughs> Somebody threw it out. Tell you some people, eh? Right, where's my wick? There it is. I forgot to clean this bit up. Got too excited. That should be fine.
Crosslink. Yeah, I'm not sure on. Yeah, I'm not sure if super glue does dissolve in isopropyl or not. I think it might. I'm not a hundred percent though. But yeah, the stuff I used was cyan acrylic, so you know, standard super glue in it. do while I'm at it because I'm pretty sure this cart slot wasn't a hundred percent like clean inside it's been through the ultrasonic but I'll give it a bit of a scrub as well James McNeil subscribed oh Not to blow his horn, but look for more fun making it on YouTube. He made a three-part series on repairing it. Lee's a good lad. Oh, I'll check him out as well. Why not? I finished my logic probe. Oh, you made a logic probe. Very handy to have if you want to check in, uh, if you want to check on, like, activity on, um, chips outputs or something. I've used logic probes before, they are handy. Yeah, yeah, I got you, RW. Yeah, no worries, mate. I know, I, I, it, it took me a second, but I saw the other comment and got the context. I know what you mean. Alright, let's... I think what I'm going to do now is throw this on top of my dehumidifier just for a few minutes to dry off the IPA. So again, I'll be back in two seconds. I'm in the same room, but yeah, let's get this sorted out. So, a leaf blower will dry it real quick. Yeah, bloody wood, wouldn't it? Be like turbo dry. I'm done. That'd be great. <laughs> Yeah, Cassian TV made one, so I used a schematic improved and made a better version than his, in my opinion. He even added a self-test mode that is handy. Oh, cool. Very neat. I don't really know how the logic testers actually work underneath. I know they use some kind of reference to ground and so on, and they take power and light. I guess they an analyze pulses, but I don't really know how they do it underneath. I know how to use them. You know, start smoking, stop vaping. <laughs> Well, depending on the occasion, depends on which I do. I do occasionally smoke, so... I always feel like crap when I do. But I, I was quite a heavy smoker. I'd rather be a heavy vapor than a heavy smoker. Tastes better, too. But yeah, I'm going to flip that gang gear.
Right. Minty fresh. I'm gonna have a look at it, see how clean it looks or how dirty it looks. And if it looks a bit dirty, I'll do it. I'll give it another cycle. Yeah, COVID's no good. COVID is no good. Look at that, looks, looks brand new. That looks really nice. I'm happy with that. That's a very clean Game Gear board. Check it out. Is that that? What is that? That looks a bit nasty. What is that? Hmm. Feels like some kind of adhesive. Probably is some kind of glue that was left behind, but okay. And the other side. Now oh, we're looking. No flux on the connector. Oh man, that looks great, doesn't it? That looks fantastic. I like that new ultrasonic. Squeaky clean indeed. I think that's good. Oh, there's a bloody moth attacking me. Go away. Scram. My moth flew into the side of my head. Right, so last thing is to get this thing assembled. Well, there we go, there's the funny playing. 3.1 installed. It's a pretty big job in terms of time. It's not hard, it's just, you know, a little bit laborious. I think it's a fairly neat install though. You know, I've kept the wires relatively neat. It's a pretty clean install, I think. Right. So we've just got this to do. Okay, so this is the adhesive for a frame the uh, LCD. It ships with the uh, kit, which is quite nice. So I think what I'll do, remove that one first, and let's just put this in position. Now then, if I flip this over, I'm going to put the glass on next. I figure if I do the glass next, it will keep dust from falling through onto the LCD when I install that. These are always a pain in the ass. Come on. Second generation i5. Well, the, the second gen i5s weren't bad processors, to be fair. Like the 2500K, I think that was Sandy Bridge, if I remember right. I was rocking one of those for years. Yeah, 
There we go. These are always such a pain. Right, there we go. That's in nicely. Now then, uh, the LCD. So I used to have a way to install these. How did I do it? I think I did it like that. And then I just pressed it down. Yeah, okay. So. Closest to that I did was a Ryzen and RTX system in a case from 2003, nice. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. What? Oh, I've put it in upside down, haven't I? Like an idiot. Hang on. I've got to take that back out. It goes that way around. Perfect. Yeah, it was upside down, James, you're right. I was being an idiot. <laughs> right, so let's get all the buttons in, shall we? There we go. Uh, probably that one. Yep. Where's the other one? There it is. Yeah, exactly right, James. At least I caught it. If I left it too long, that would have cured a bit, and that would have been quite annoying, actually. Sit that in like that. No, I need the speaker as well. Yeah, I'm missing something there. Yep. Yeah.
You know, it doesn't even fit. It's only got to be close enough, hasn't it? It's got a clip anyway in here, so I'll use that. <laughs> God, these buttons even feel... They don't feel good. They feel bad. It's fiddly. Very fiddly. Right. Come on, you git. There's a little plastic bump that's blocking it from going in, and it looks like it's supposed to clip it in, but it doesn't. It's just really bad. So I've got to fiddle about with a bloody thing. Come on. Come on. I don't want to break the solder there. I don't want to break the shell. Clip needs to be trimmed, that's no good. Yeah, the bump will be for the Retro 6 1 and not an original, so I'm just gonna trim it. Where is my scalpel? Where is my scalpel? There it is. Micromage was watching, he would say to your left, and he'd have been wrong. <laughs> if we just sort of trim it out a bit with this blade, we should be good.
I should do it. Oh, that's much better now. There we go, that'll do the job. Right. What mess and I <laughs> I was just saying I was looking for my scalpel blade and I said if you were watching there uh, micro you'd tell me to like look to my left usually brew an emoji <laughs> but you know what you are watching so hey <laughs> alright let's get this screwed in again now that's much better. It's a much better fit now. There we go, that speaker ain't going anywhere now. So, we should then just be able to move that along there like that. There we go, so. with the fiddly crap in it. Anyway, let's get this screwed in. So, people were suggesting to me not to use the Retro 6 screws. Okay, ribbon connectors in now. So we're just gonna screw it down. I think this is a relatively neat install. It's probably my neatest game gear install I've done. Right, let's uh, let's let's check it out. Let's see what people are saying because I see a lot of chat. Okay, so it sounds like, uh... I'm waiting for the screen on motherboard to fail, Luke. Oh, come on, give me some credit, man. all feeling pretty nice actually. So we'll get this screwed together.
Threading in, come on, thread in your bugger. There we go. That's really bad, actually. That doesn't fit quite flush. Why is that? Is it because they're fucking shit ass screw posters? What? There we bloody go. It's a bit shit actually. Right. Oh for God's sake, come on. Very tight, sort of fit together, that. Having fun, did one of these last night. Oh, nice, hey, Sean. How's it going, brother? Same. <laughs> Now do me a favour and thread in screw, come on, is that it? Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's nice and tight. How's is that? As is that. Right, so there's a few more screws I've got to ah, scrounge up. Ow. Oh, got an achy foot. So here's some originals. Mm. 
missing is one. One at the top left here, so there's one. One at the bottom left. Nice and tight as well. Okay, cool. Right, so it's just a couple of screws now for the cart slot, so that's one. I think maybe I should use the Retro 6 self tampers for these ones, wherever I put them. Yeah, yeah they look different. Yeah, they went in just fine. Great. Actually, while I'm here, let's fish out this, uh, this doohickey. Here we go. For the customer, I wonder if I can pick up parcels from the post office because I don't like them I'm opening my packages. Uh, RW, you can you can get stuff delivered to a post office. It's called click and collect, but you have to pick it as a service. Yeah, there we go. That's that's pretty good. That feels decent. Those bu those buttons don't feel mushy, so that's good. All right. Next thing, I guess, is to secure the uh, power and sound boards. Which way around the power button's meant to go on this thing? I think it's like that. Yep, that's right. Cool. Right, let's get these screwed in. one. 
snatch your silk rope purchases. <laughs> You know, if your mum keeps opening your packages, what you want to do is start trolling her a bit. Start buying, like, 12-inch dildos and shit. Watch her freak out. Or better yet, get a package, right? With a can of, like, CS spray, pepper spray in it. Rig it up so that when it's opened, it just explodes like pepper spray everywhere, and then send it to yourself. Yeah, exploding glitter, there you go, that's the way to go. That is the way to go. Right, a bit of double-sided tape. Let's get a bit of this off. Exploding glitter, um... Pepper spray. Could stick a Ukrainian anti-tank mine in there if you're really feeling a bit... Oh, there's already tape on it. I'm a, night, I'm a, I'm a clown. But yeah, Ukrainian anti-tank mine if you're feeling a bit insidious. You know, there's, there's, there's options. There's, there's choices. Guess I didn't need that. SS-18 in the parcel, what, like, intercontinental ballistic missile? Yeah, I mean, I guess you could. Why not? I mean, I don't think there's an explicit law about not sending intercontinental ballistic missiles in the post, so I think you're good to go. I think you're golden there. <laughs> Right, now if I can loop these cables under the edge of the PCB, it would probably be slightly better. So let's see if I can do that. Come on, it's such a pain. Come on. Yeah, guess not. Fine. one under, oh come on, get back under there, and you.
in the home stretch here. Right. Oh, I'm so blind, my screwdriver's right in front of me. <laughs> Wipes out half of Essex. <laughs> I mean, if you sent um, a Russian nuclear warhead by, like, Hermes or Every or whatever the hell they call themselves now, like, it'll probably end up arriving in uh, France. But yeah, bloody thing. Actually, to be fair, it's just never going to arrive, period, anywhere. Although, you know what? If you put a nuclear warhead on a timer and send it via Hermes, we might actually figure out where the packages are getting lost, because it'll be wherever the giant mushroom cloud is. I feel like that's for the greater good. Yeah, two problems, one new. And whichever bastard driver's robbing your packages, they're going to have a fucking shock, aren't they? <laughs> I'm going to disappear tonight. Feels pretty solid, this, you know. Right, I'm gonna grab some batteries. Let's fire her up. Be right back. Well, if you you know what, 
The best way, uh, if you invest billions of dollars and nuke New York City, that's billions of dollars of improvements. Don't put the batteries in backwards yet. Yeah, tell me about it. That was crazy with the polarity thing. Six bloody AA batteries. It must have bankrupted like kids' parents back in the 90s, these things. turns fine. That one, you gotta really get in there to do the volume. Good though, right? This brings back my childhood. I played this game so much on the Master System. Oh, I had.
had the uh, the invincibility thing, um, Felix. That's looking pretty good. game live stream now yeah right max but i think the screen alignment's pretty nice it, it's, it's turned out pretty good this actually i think i think that looks quite smart to be honest the only thing i don't like i'm not happy with is this damn volume wheel is definitely grinding it's like too much it, yeah it's in the wrong position it's not quite right I think I probably am going to have to take that out and file it a little bit. Yeah. That's ridiculous. But there we go. That is what it is, right? So we'll do that real quick, I guess. It's annoying, so I've got to take everything out again. Well, if you're going to do a job, do it properly, I suppose. Yeah, I guess it's probably just uh, whoever at Retro 6 designed the shell had their measurements off by like a millimetre or something. Not end of the world, but annoying. Yeah, nice little gang gear to work on this one. Or the fab, ABS shrinks as it cools. I mean, it could be both, right, Felix? It could be that, like, whoever designed it took the exact measurements of an existing one, not accounting for shrinkage during process, and then shrinkage occurred. Let's get this thing taken apart and file down that volume wheel a little bit. I put this together quite tightly as well, so <laughs> it's annoying. Yeah, that's exactly what would have happened, Felix. You know it. You know it. But we could correct this design flaw, but then again, if we don't, we'll save money. <laughs> All right. This is annoying, because I have to undo every bloody screw. Again. But it is what it is. You know what, I don't even know where my files are. I think I've got one around somewhere.
I'm, Sonic's my go-to. I've got loads of like Game Gear games, but I always end up testing with Sonic, just because I love Sonic. Sonic's great. Like the old Sonic games are really good. The new stuff's absolute garbage. But the old stuff, yeah. Like new 3D Sonic trying to be Breath of the Wild is just ridiculous. Like why? the spudget. Where's the spudget? Where's my spudget? There it is. Right, let me find a file. I'll be back in a minute. Probably hanging out with your wire strippers. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> is the tradition. Right, I'll be back. I'm going to go on a search. Search complete. The last one I did didn't have this problem. All right, before I fit it together properly, I'm just going to see if that wheel will move freely if it's like secured quite hard down, would it? No, not yet. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was fine. So I always check that sort of stuff, so that's annoying, isn't it? Oh well. 
Maybe their quality control slipped. I don't say slipped, I don't think they have the best quality control anyway. Alright, let's try and flunk. Right. Does that move freely now? Mostly. Still clips a bit at the top. I need to file a bit more. See, you shouldn't have to do stuff like this. You know, if you're going to pay good money on a new shell, it should just be good, right? I mean, I'm not whinging that much about it. I don't mind, but like... If you're going to design something for this, do it properly, right? I need another file, actually. I need a smaller one. Back in a sec. I've got to get a smaller file. Let's try these. I think this should be small enough. Yeah, that should do it. Right, let's see if that does the job. <coughs> I'm still bloody catching. That's a lot better though. That's much better than it was because I can actually turn it now. Third party whatever's ever rep for a reason. Yeah, well you're not you're not wrong. That said, it's not like you're gonna get first party Sega products anymore, is it? At least not new. <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, I think that's that's good now. That should be perfectly good now. So let's get it back together again. Let's get it back together. Get it back together again. Mm 
<laughs> yeah, that's not too bad now. Right, good. Attempt number two. Oh no, the coded disease is spreading again. What? Oh, right, right, right. But then they're brain dirt. Yep, I'm with you now. I understand. I comprende. Oh shit. Just lost some screws. Woohoo. No worries though. I have replacements. down there, one at the upper corner as well, up this side. Bollocks did that screw go? There it is. Oh. Uh, the Retro 6 cases ain't too bad. I've seen worse Game Boy shells, to be fair. Okay. And that spins freely now. So that's good. So now let's get this LCD ribbon back in. Like so. You know, to be fair, I can't see Retro 6 being headquartered in the UK with our current energy prices doing particularly well, to be honest. There you go. What's that one in? Oh man, I saw the craziest thing, right? Apparently China's going through one of its like, well, actually not one of, it's going through its worst heat wave ever recorded in its recorded history. And um, obviously there's a fair bit of uh, footage about 
crazy stuff that's been going on. And there was one video, it was absolutely bonkers, where, like, there's a guy going down the street and there's just smoke pouring out of uh, a whole load of street lamps. Like, every street light down the street's just smoking. It was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Looked kind of cool, but it's kind of like, man, I didn't even know that was possible. Not from heat, anyway. Well, not from weather heat. So the bot about the Frankie video, what's the scoop? Well, what happens is my bot alerts when, um, basically it alerts when content changes and YouTube gives notifications when um, I'm editing a description of a live stream. So when I'm editing that live stream's description, YouTube fires an event that my bot sees and my bot goes, oh, there's new content going live, I'll alert on Discord with it. And it checks to see if the IDs and stuff match up and if they don't, it'll go, oh, that's definitely new content and alert on it. And basically it's just because YouTube are alerting before I'm even live. So like, as soon as I click on the edit tab, it sees that as like me going live and alerts on it. But there's no way, like, the data that YouTube send, there's no way to really differentiate. You can't tell if it was just somebody clicking on the edit page or whether it was actual new content, so... It's just the way that alerting works. Like, if I, if I were to go live again uh, later today, tomorrow, something like that, it doesn't matter when, like, just arbitrary number, it would alert saying that I'm doing a Game Gear, even though it, you know, it would probably be something else. <laughs> I've had some LED lights that smoked at normal temps. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, Micro. You're totally right. There is, uh, there is some rough stuff going on right now. One of the big things for China is they've got this crazy climate change hitting them. And on top of that, they're still trying to pursue a no, a zero COVID policy in it it's just not going to work long term <laughs> so you know it is what it is and with China making absolutely everything we are all in trouble when China's in trouble Right, there we go. So let's uh, let's have another deck. Let's have another go. Typical. Ah, uh, why? You know what? Basically, filings have gotten under the screen now. I thought that might happen. I was hoping it wouldn't. Anyway, let's see if it works. Uh, it needs a game in it. It's still difficult. as well. Oh, what a pain in the ass.
Like, look. You're gonna focus camera, come on. Shut up, Sonic. You can probably see that's... It's kind of on an angle. It's also recessed in even further, so you can't get your finger in to turn it. You know, I don't know if it is made in Britain, but considering they try to market themselves as quality goods, Retro 6 should be fucking ashamed at the low quality of this. It's absolutely shite. Gotta file it to get things to fit. Shit screws. Things don't quite line up. Like, Genuinely, these aren't really good shells. It's just they're the only ones that do it. Made in Britain. Typical. Well, Felix, the UK used to be a country that manufactured a lot of goods, right? Like... Nowadays, we kind of don't. And what we do manufacture, unless it's scientific gear, is usually absolutely fucking shit. MHO meter. I don't know what an MHO meter is, to be fair. Well, Retro 6 don't acknowledge that this shit's like low quality and like aligns poorly and stuff like that. I mean, they look nice, don't get me wrong, but they are, they are a bit of a pain. Like, I don't want to keep taking this apart just to put it together. It's fucking stupid. I don't want to be filing things. I want a case that I just put together and that's it. Job done, you know. I don't want to be, like, filing it just to get it to work, just to get it to fit. Like I say, they should be fucking ashamed of the state of these shells. Yeah, we're good at alcohol. Cars, not so much. Like, we make some nice cars, but not many. And the vast majority of British car brands have kind of been bought out by foreign companies. I mean, there's a few um, smaller car manufacturers that do cool stuff, but like, although cool, it's often really quite poor quality as well. Looking at you, Noble. Yep, that definitely got plastic shavings on it. I'm just going to put that aside there for now. And 
there's still some plastic shavings on that. That's really, really annoying. Uh, let's see what I can do anyway. You know what, fuck this. That can come off. I'm getting another one. I'm not cleaning it. <laughs> that tape's a bit knackered now as well because it's covered in this fucking plastic shavings. Great. I mean, I can't blame anyone but myself for that, but still. Uh, made in the UK, Tony. <laughs> If the adhesive went all the way around the screen, how did the shavings get in? Um, no idea. Probably gaps. Poorly fit shell that doesn't fit quite flush. Who knows, right? I mean, you can see the adhesive. You can see it's like a gasket, right? But there you go. <laughs> I might remove it and put some of my own adhesive down, actually, just to be sure that we don't get any shavings in there. Yeah. Fuck it. That's gone. Right, where's my 3M stuff? Or Unibond, or whatever it is. Let's use this. Stick that down like that. Get another bit. <laughs> oh, it's something.
Fucking hell, come on. Absolute pain in the ass. Retro 6, fuck you. <laughs> to be fair, I can't blame Retro 6 for what I'm doing right now, but, you know, whatever. I'll try. ABS from Japan and moulded in China using a well-established factor. That's from the <laughs> that's from the black version on their page. Well, I'm going to say that that's absolute bollocks. And if it's not bollocks, then um, it's kind of misrepresenting the truth. The reason I say that is because just because it's at the factory that used to make the originals doesn't mean that it's anything like the originals, right? That's my thinking. Right, anyway, let's get these shavings off. There we go. Make sure it's not on the back side as well. Shavings on the front, fucking hell, I can't win. I actually cannot win. Right. There we go. There we go. Progress were made. Let's go around the edges like that, and make sure it's got a nice seal again. And it does it? No, that moved. Why did that move? Why is that not secure? Oh, I see the problem. I don't know what the problem is. These little plastic bumpies. It's not needed. Alright, that should help. It's not sticking at the top, probably for the same bloody reason. Yeah, upside down as well. I know. People screwing up. It's upside down. <laughs> it's a good catch, though. That should do it. Yeah, that's much better now. Okay, once again, let's try. 
try this again. Look at those shells, better than factory. <laughs> well, it is now. <laughs> Because the back, the factory version is fucking shite. It's a bag of wank. Pardon my French. I should uh, keep the swearing down, I suppose. It is quite annoying. Quite annoying. Okay. Third time's a charm, eh? Maybe? Let's have a look. Let's see. Let's see if the third time will be the charm. We can hope. We can live in hope. Sake. I've got to undo it again because the speaker cable has broken. You will see what I mean if you don't already in a second. At least it's an easy fix. One of the wires has popped off. Which means I gotta strip it back. Ah. Which it really doesn't want to do. got to resolve this There we go. Always bloody something. Now, you know what? I'm going to say to people, keep your original shells if you can. These Retro 6 ones are basically garbage. It's just they're the only replacement shells you can get. Like, if your shell's knackered, sure, get one, but... My advice to most folks, stick, stick with the originals. They might not look as good, colour-wise and so on, but quality-wise, they're much better than these POSs. <laughs> Hi, 
kind of a shame actually, because Retro 6 could um, easily address these kind of problems and they'd have good products on their hands, but they don't bother. My dentist is happily employed. Well, you see, you see, Felix, the problem with your um, assumption there is that you're forgetting what nationality I am. You see, I'm British. Do you think we care about dentistry? You know? Just walk around with no teeth, it's fine. You know what, I've nearly stripped this one. I'm gonna replace it. glass cover. Didn't put it on yet, did I? No. <laughs> this is driving me mad driving me mad very fiddly this because I'm trying to stop the adhesive rough edges that like didn't quite line up from occluding the screen so I'm sort of tearing it off a bit yeah it's working though
that's not too bad. This bit's not great. Occluding is a good word, underused, yeah, I know. I will say, it is better than working on a Lynx. Even with this amount of annoyance. Yeah, I know, it was just dampened. I know not to get IPA in a screen. I've done that before. That was not fun. Do you know what? I'm probably going to have to pull this apart again. I think I am. I think I have to pull this apart once more. Because that adhesive is just no good that cuts no good i think i'm gonna have to use my uh tessa tape instead which is fine i'll do that but that's not gonna work what i was just trying Oh well. It's a right old pain. No, it's nothing like that. I'm just a little bit annoyed at this particular shell. I don't know if it's just this one shell or what. I don't mind doing Game Gear work. Not at all. Where the bloody hell's a spudger? No, I'm just getting frustrated is all. Basically, it's because I had to file the damn shell and then I got file it like the filings found their way into the screen and it was uh, you know how it is annoying we lift that up give this a clean down Frankies are looking like a much better prospect at the moment unless you charge $800 for your mod No, I'm going to disagree and say Frankies are not a good prospect at all because I've not had much joy with them. I don't really see the point in me putting more time. There's a sunk cost fallacy, right? I'm calling it where I've called it. I don't want to touch Frankies. I'm probably going to do one more. Well, no, probably. I'm going to try to do one more. That's for somebody, though. And after that, nah. I'm, I'm not interested in them anymore. They're a waste of time. They're a waste of effort. They take ages to sort out. They take ages to do all the work on. And then when you've got all that work done, there's every chance that you hitting that thing with 190 Celsius from the bottom of the board has probably done some damage elsewhere. And then before you know it, it's coming back for some really weird, hard to trace fault. Complete waste of time, effort and money. It's just not worth doing. And which is why I think so many people don't do it. 
I mean, I know Booter does it, and I've got respect for him doing that, but, like, it ain't for me. Right, anyway, where's that bloody double-sided tape? Where is it? Where be it? No, seriously, where is that? I thought it was right here. I thought I had my double-sided tape right here. But yeah, PS3s, I was getting into it, but I was finding, like, I was spending hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours researching them, and it, like, it just sort of got to the point where it's like, why am I doing this to myself? I'm thinking that right now, because I'm not sure where my double-sided tape is. I'll be back in a second. I think it might actually be in my living room. Yeah, Felix, it's definitely going to remain a niche mod, that's for sure. After taking a step back and looking at it, though, I actually don't see the point. Why Frankie a backward-compatible... PS3 when you can still buy them working. Just buy a working one. You know? Like, myself personally, if I wanted a backward compatible Frankie, I'd just get a working backward back compatible Frankie. And be done with it. Easy. E Z. Buddha is insanely prolific. Seems like he streams for eight hours every day. Well, he does, doesn't he? Because he's he's streaming his uh, he's streaming his business, right? I mean, fair play to him. I mean, it's a great way to market his repair business, right? Why? Why not? And he's a fun guy to watch. Yeah, not rare. I find they're pretty common. Depends on your market as well though, right? I don't know, I just personally don't really see the point right now. I mean, it's cool to keep the old ones that are dying going and repair them, right? Like, it is cool. I can't deny it, but like, for me, yeah, waste of time and effort. bit and move that across a bit and that way it definitely won't occlude the glass. There we go. Well Catch C is backward compatible as well remember. It's not hardware backward compatible, well it sort of is but not fully. Right, let's give this another go. Let's do it. Yeah, loads of people try Frankies on the C models. I mean, they are still backward compatible. Not like the A models. 
The A models are the coveted ones. Right, now where the hell did that LCD go? Where did I put it? Right there. Yeah, for me anyway, I'm not bothering with PS3 stuff. I don't really even want to see anything about it anymore. I'm sick of it. I might come back to it when the itch strikes again. I still have a bunch of them to do after all. <laughs> Yeah, PS3s, I don't know, they're not, you know, thinking about it, they're not that brilliant of a console, really. I mean, the games on there, there's a few good unique ones, but nothing that special. I don't know, I mean, The Last of Us was good on the PS3. But you don't need a PS3 to play that. I mean, PS2 compatibility is pretty cool, but then again, you can just have a PS2, so just get a PS2. They don't break down on, like, the uh, PS3s. Well, they do, but not like PS3s. They're usually a lot easier to repair. ColecoVision. Yeah, those older consoles are really cool. I've never actually seen a uh, Coleco Vision in person. Like, never. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. <laughs> right, there we go. That's much better now. That wheel's moving as well. That's good. I think we've finally got somewhere, folks. We've finally got somewhere. Now, I'm going to have to flip this over and put a new cover on it before it gets covered in dust. So, let's sort that out. Shanka.
Oh, uh, you know what? I think I see how the filings got in as well. I think it's these holes. I think they just fell through. Kind of annoying. Right, come on. Don't stick to the back, you. Come on, there we are. Right. That's not too bad now. Finally. 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 I'm going to have to have a blast on Sonic just to relax and calm down a bit. That's what I'm going to have to do. Be like, ah, Sonic. go there we go folks how about that we're bish bash boosh or something and there we go right amazing that's that's what I wanted okay let's get it together again Retro Junkie, what's up? Did all this years ago, was top repair site in Nation for many years. Oh, very cool, nice one. Was it E the very last 360? I can't remember now. Can't really remember my 360 models anymore. Right, yeah, I know the one you mean then. It looked vaguely like the Xbox One, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, I know the one. Wizard Ace Forever. Yeah. I still think Always Online's a bit dumb. I mean, put it this way, right? As civilization collapses. How the hell are we supposed to play our games if we've no network connectivity? It's unacceptable. You know, if if Microsoft's data centers have been like hit by a neutron bomb, I still want to be able to play my local games. <laughs> Easy, I have an N64. <laughs> Good console, that. Had Conker's Bad Dirt Fur Day on it, and that was an amazing game.
Okay, I think that's all the screws. Does the volume move freely? I can't really tell. It still doesn't move freely. Oh, this is ridiculous. You can't... What the fuck? This is stupid, man. This is absolutely fucking stupid. Now, look at that. Like, I have filed this loads. And I mean loads. This is stupid. Come on. Focus. Focus. You can see it there. Like. <sighs> it's this shitty fucking case. File it more, but I'm I'm not sure that's such a good idea. Somebody needs a word with Retro Six. Yeah, maybe if I bring it apart, maybe I can just... If I do that, maybe I can slide the board across to the left a touch. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Oh, I, I would. Rare save the N64. Yeah, rip rare, man. Rare did save the 64, because they came out with... Uh, was it Rare who did Goldeneye? I think it was, wasn't it? And Perfect Dark. And they did um, Conquer. Like, rare were a pretty good studio back in the day. They're kind of... Um, it's not that they're bad now, but... They just don't put anything out that's particularly brilliant. Like, Sea of Thieves was okay, but eh. Yeah, Dreamcast was reasonably cool. DK64. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, I completely forgot about Donkey Kong 64. Hold on a minute. I'm a fucking moron. You know what? I'm a fucking moron. I've been filing the wrong bit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been falling the wrong bit. Uh, derp, 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 derp. Come on. What's going on here? Come on. I was supposed to file this bit. Derp, 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 derp. Fucking clown. Oh, I'm gonna use fresh screws on this one. Okay, so what is the problem? That is dead straight on there, but it's the case, so I just need to file that a bit. Right, fine. 
Let's do this. Smells like plastic friction. That should do it. Now what's it catching on? Oh, for God's sake, seriously. Loosen it a bit and see if I can... No, that's got to be filed even more. Great. It smells like China. I couldn't say, I've never been to China. Never been. I'm sure, it's fine. Right, let's try that again. Now uh, that's going to need filing even more. Deburr it with my fingernail. <laughs> right, I think that's got it. Let's have a look. Ski. Should hopefully be good. Semtex might make a big enough hole. I don't know. I don't know about that, Felix. It probably needs something more than Semtex. I 
I'm thinking uh, antimatter maybe. Antimatter might do it. Okay, that's got some movement in it now. That's good. We're good. Finally. You go in there, you go in there, and you go in there. Right, I think that's it. I'm gonna screw it together one last time and hope for the best. Wish me luck, folks. Yeah, I figure if I smash some antimatter into the side of this, it'll annihilate 100% of the matter, release a shit ton of energy, and make a hole just about big enough for the volume wheel. Is the GG even worth all this trouble? I don't know. I never had one. Um, yeah. Maybe. I mean, to be fair, when I've done these previously, they've not been quite as much trouble as this one, so... I don't know. I think it's largely just this crappy shell. I think maybe Retro 6 should get on the old blower. Contact their um, manager at the factory that makes these and go, Oi, the quality of these is getting shitty. Fix it. I do like the colour. I like this deep red. It looks pretty cool. I think it's based on the uh, Coca-Cola game gear they did. What are those T-shaped holes? Oh, the game gear had a whole shit ton of um, expansion devices like um, the Master Gear and stuff like that. It was for the uh, adapters and other expansion things to just sort of clip onto. The Game Gear even had a TV adapter. You could plug it into the uh, cartridge slot at the top. It would like screw down there and it'd have a little antenna and a little UHF tuner on it and you could tune in uh, TV on it. It had a lot of very interesting peripherals, the uh, Game Gear. It was a pretty cool device. Right, you know what, that's sealed up pretty nicely actually. Let's give this a go again. And hopefully this time I can freely adjust the brightness and the volume without anything seizing up.
Yeah, the only downside is the replacement um, fascias, like these glass replacements, they're not oleophobic coated. Okay, brightness moves freely, volume does too. Oh, hey, that's pretty nice now. I think brightness is good. Damn, that goes loud, and the volume's good. Not bad. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, it's a shame there's no stereo speakers on these. Now, somewhere nearby, I think I do have a Master Gear adapter. There's something I want to try real quick. That's if it's where I think it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay, it's not a Master Gear, but it's a knockoff, but it'll do. Oh no, I'm getting cramped. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow. Ow, ow. Ow. Oh Jesus, that's bad cramp. Ah, my leg. <laughs> so yeah, so... This is a cool little adapter that you could get for these. And the way they worked... You popped it in. Like that. And you could screw it down there if you wanted to. We don't need to do that. And you can see it sits flat along the top like that and it's largely okay. It makes it quite beefy at the back, but this can now play Sega Master System games. So if I just go and grab the Master System EverDrive cartridge. So this is another functionality test. <laughs> Check this ridiculous combination out. So there we go, we can select games. So let's select one, I don't know. We can select any Master System game, any Europe game, I guess. Let's have a look. No. Whoops. Let's try that again. I don't know, what do we want to play? Batman Returns. Daffy Duck. There were so many Master System games. Hmm... Bart vs. the World? Yeah, why not?
Seems a bit funny, doesn't it? It definitely don't look right. I wonder why that is. Let's, um... Let's try the classic age-old solution for these sort of problems. I'm sure this isn't the problem, but you never know. I mean, it looks a bit funny, doesn't it? Doesn't look right. Let's try a US game. Alex Kidd, yeah, why not? Not quite right. I don't know if it's a regional thing. Yeah, it could be. Let me try, um... Let me try, re like, cleaning this thing, because it's, it's been a while. It's probably just poor contacts. So if we just get a bit of IPA in there... And a brush. I need a brush. I need a brush. Where's my brush? There's my brush. No, I don't think I ha Do I have... Actually, I do have a normal Master System game to try. Yeah, I do. I'll give one a go in a minute. But let me just clean this up. It's probably just this. It's probably just dirty contacts. Yeah, it could be a dodgy compatibility thing with this as well, you know, it might not be 100% compatible with Game Gear, I don't know. We'll find out. This should prove whether it's contacts or not. We know the cartridge slot's clean because it's been through an ultrasonic and I've scrubbed it. So let's find out. Let's see what we get. Yeah, it still looks a bit dodgy. I don't, I'm going to get a real Master System game. from my personal collection it's balked as well I don't know if it's my adapter or if it's uh what or what? It might be the GG SMS solder wire I've done, you know, thinking about it. Maybe it's not right. Should be. Hmm, that's what I think. That should work. But if we go back to an actual Game Gear game... Nope. Yep. 
Yeah, it's probably just that. It's either my adapter, this, or it's the uh, Game Gear Sega Master System Select wire that I've soldered. Because it's almost like, like, the fact it loads, there's a bit of colour showing as well. It's almost like that screen's not switching to its uh, Sega Master System mode. That's what I think it is. So I think I'm just gonna have to redo that wire. That's my thinking. Enduro Racer. I can do that on another day. The main thing is, this does work. It's probably just that wire. That's my thought. That's my thinking. Right, anyway. Let me get this away. Because I do like this, and they're very, very hard to come by now, these things. These adapters. The fact that one's still got its box is kind of impressive. But yeah, there we go, you know. We know this works. I'm going to try some other games real quick. Got some classics. Mickey Mouse, Sonic 2. Robocop versus the Terminator, which is actually a pretty good game. Lemmings, Woody Pop, more Lemmings, Hulk. Let's go with Robocop. Skip. Oh, Bethesda Softworks. Terminator killed me. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> These old school 8 bit attempts at sound, like voices.
It's a good scream, though. Well, you've never seen the movie or you've never seen the game. Or both. I guess probably both. Um, if you've never seen Robocop the movie, oh man, you're in for a treat when you do. That movie is so ridiculous that it's good. It's so ridiculous. Like, you, you can't watch that movie and not have a laugh at it. Oh man, you should watch it. It's like proper classic 80s cheesy movie, right? Takes itself seriously, which just makes it even better. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I'm happy to call it here anyway. Like, it's pretty late. I've got work in the morning, so I've got to get to bed soon. So, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to call it there, folks. Thanks for tagging along and having a watch, though, whoever joined. Um, well, Luke, it wasn't fixed so much as just modded. This wasn't broken. The Game Gear itself worked, you know. Uh, we just gave it a new shell and gave it a new screen. I mean, it, yeah, it's still pretty cool. Um, yeah, actually, I'm probably going to take these batteries out before I before I go, just because. I mean, apart from being a bit of a pain in the ass, it is a nice looking shell. The other two weren't as lucky. Uh, other two, other two. I'm not sure I follow. I don't quite follow you, um, Mr. Luke. But yeah, it's good to be back, Max. It's good to be back. It's been too long, and I do know that I need to get around to sorting out your PlayStation 3. It'll probably be the last one I ever do, actually. Actually, ironically, it'll probably be the first one I ever managed to do as well. I've not had much luck with them. So, yeah. Buddha's dead Switch and Phil's PS4 were both no fix. Oh, I see. Well, this is kind of a partial. Uh, it needs the Game Gear, comp uh, not the Game Gear, the Master System compatibility looking at, but yeah. Anyway. It was great having folks along. Like I say, it's been a long time. It's nice that you've all stuck around for the stream. It's nice to see familiar faces as well, you know. Um. You know, thanks for saying hi and popping on and chilling out. So yeah, I'm just gonna put these screws in here. I've even managed to not make an absolutely horrendous mess. It's a bit cluttered, but it won't take much to clean that up. So yeah, all in all, I'm happy with this with this uh, end result. Took way longer than I would have liked, but there we go. Yeah, that's it, Max. Like I say, what I have managed to do with your uh, PS3 is bake it for so long that I doubt there's any moisture left in that board. <laughs> right, anyway, folks. I'm going to get gone. I'm going to get myself something to eat and then get my head down as i got work in the morning. And, yeah. Anyway, take care, everyone. Have a good evening. I know uh, some of you are up quite late, so, you know... Might be time to consider the bed. And for those of you in Murica land, have a good afternoon or good evening, depending on which part of America you're in. Take care all, and uh, yeah, as always, bye for now. Ciao.